or subway or something where I don't have to go sit in the bar for like half an hour for while delicious food. Long yet. Okay. Well, we're live. We're talking about food. I'm hungry. No, I know that. I was super hungry uh, yesterday. We recorded a very long episode of Let's Talk FGO, which people still seem to like. Yay. But it was... Uh, what, what was I going... What did I have? I think I had a you know peanut butter and jelly, and it was a while before, and then we recorded it for like two hours, and I was like, damn, I'm hungry at the end of this. I well, anyway, think... we're here. We're doing the thing. We're doing What's Up. Domino's? Hi. Welcome to What's Up. What's up? Damn it, Domino's. Why don't you have stuffed crust? Pizza Hut, do you have a trademark on that shit? Fuck you. My who knows. Trademarks are weird. Yeah. I don't know, like I don't want to like get into pizza, but I usually get Domino's pizza. I don't mm-hmm. know why. That's yeah. why that's why I like. But I, Pizza I Hut usually has Domino's. Pizza Hut always has like the weirdest fucking pizzas. They're and... the Domino's is the local chain for me. Also, the reason why Pizza Hut probably has it weird is because they're also aim- owned by the same people who own KFC and Taco Bell, which are also known for just weird ideas. Yeah, I know, but here's the thing. I like weird ideas. I mean, that's fair. Like, I'm just saying that I'm, I'm pretty sure their their marketing and creative teams are the same. Oh, uh, yeah. Like, I know over in Japan, they get some crazy-ass fucking pizzas. Like, I always remember the fucking Sundere pizza, which was just a fuck ton of jalapenos on it. And I'm like, this would probably be, like, hellfire in, like, all parts of me, but I need to try this. Also, I'm going to warn the audience. I think my allergies are bothering me today. I had to go outside and get the mail. And it was a windy day. And I've mentioned this before. The climate's really fucky right now here. Like, you know, we'll have, like, record highs for the the time in the week. You know, it gets up to 80 plus in, you know, early March. And then last night it was, like, 50 degrees outside. And it was cold. So the plants are freaking out. I'm freaking out. Our air conditioner's probably freaking out. God damn it. Jiminy. That is a pizza. Yeah. It's just jalapenos and fucking cheese. Yeah, so po- <clears throat> supposedly the cheese canceled it out, but I, mean, I, I don't know. I like, I've kind of gotten like used to spicy things as I've gotten older. I used to not be able to handle any sort of spice. Well, part of that is because your taste buds are literally dying. Yeah, probably. Uh, but yeah, it also could be a thing. Like I've gotten, I have gained an appreciation for, you know, I don't go all in because I'm not a masochist most of the time. But I'll, mm-hmm. I'll when we, if we get some Domino's, I like to get, you know, just a regular. Pepperoni and sausage pizza, and get but get some spicy wings on the side. Yeah, and like little, I used little to little like a little bit of the spice, little bit of the, little bit of the jazz. Like I used to like I used to like abhor fucking like buffalo wings or not, and I'm all like, man, buffalo wings are great. Mm-hmm. I, I got to get boneless though. I hate and bones. I hate bones. I hate really? bones. Yeah. I'm okay with the bones. Boneless, the boneless shenanigans are okay though too. Yeah. You know, there's a, there's a get a spicy chicken sandwich that could be nice. I appreciate yeah. many forms of the chicken. What well, would be a yandere that. pizza? It'd be something that looks like it's actually sweet on top, but it's actually very spicy underneath. No, it just hide razor blades on the cheese. Oh, God. It just fucking murders you. You thought it was a regular pizza, but actually it was death. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, actually, I'm going to go, um, before we get too far, why don't you do our Patreon intro? Yes, we have been going for a little bit, so we can do. We've done the cold open, so I would like to remind mm-hmm. everybody that this episode is brought to you by our patrons like I Got Comics, Qua, Jeremy Vasquez, Kylie Denton, Nestor Flores, Rogue Robin, Shawnee P, Soda Son Over, Too Fair, and Video Gear 75. And if you like what we do and want to see us do more, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to episodes early and lots of other goodies, and it really helps us out, and we appreciate the support. Thank you. Okay, I, I, so I open it slowly because lately when I try to open it fast, it goes everywhere and I'm all like, I don't need that life right now. Mm-hmm. No, I was good. You got a, you got a good couple of peaks and valleys in that clicky. Nice. That makes me realize that I probably need to go over there and get a water because I'm drinking a lot of water lately. But I just mentioned, yes, I have, uh, I have regular like pollen allergies, not like, uh, though people in my family have really bad allergies to like bees and ants. I don't think I do. I, I'm actually, oh, it's probably not anymore because it's been about a decade, but I actually built up a decent tolerance to fire ants living in Florida for a while. Like, those, those fuckers hurt, but you get, you get stung enough times that you're like, ah, ow, cut that out. As that's opposed how I to am like, with, with, oh god, I'm dying. <laughs> Clunk. No, that's me and bees. Yeah, I've no, well, I have well, a, don't... I've talked about this, yeah. I have a crippling yeah. childhood yeah. phobia of bees, so I've, I don't take a lot of stings there, no. No. Like, um, I don't know, like, 
I don't know. I've just gotten stung like so many fucking times to the point that I can stand like in front of a open beehive and like not be particularly worried. Um, yeah, because um, actually, fun fact, um, I have actually um known people who have um had um hives, um artificial hives, and I've seen them oh cracked open and stuff like that, and I've just been all up in there, but hey guys, what you doing? They were like they just like buzz, buzz, buzz. I've learned that Honestly, usually bees are usually pretty cool unless you're directly getting in their business and they're like, hey. Yeah, that's actually what I've realized. Like bees have very specific flight patterns and it's when you're inside those flight patterns. Is it like, what the fuck is this? Well, yeah, because that's a Your very rob? they communicate by a mixture of uh, sense and motions and they follow very specific trails. Yeah. So... Not, let, you might think that bees are really complex and they probably are, but also they're not really because they're fucking tiny. So it's, I guess it's the probably the best analogy is it's almost like a kind of organic programming, right? Like just the bees know the route to the stuff that is the route they follow it every time. Well, you can actually see that a lot in a lot of insect uh, types, like ants. Mm, ants yeah. have, like ants have that. Termites have that. Yeah, ant pathfinder. Uh, I, I can't think of any other. That's ants. that's uh, unfortunately for the ants. That's usually how you get them. You slap the bait down, and then they just fuck yep. themselves over but also they want to steal your food and stuff so mm -hmm. listen ants if if you're gonna if you're gonna pay me <laughs> that's fine but otherwise this is no free ride that reminds me i still need to write that uh they write a template for blacksmith ants because we can't yes. that joke in a no i'm uh, excited for that rune factory which uh has unfortunately been lost i'm sorry i don't know what happened actually i should play some rune factory it's whatever happened that was like the code vein stuff that happened. I don't know. I don't know what your setup is. I only know what my setup is. Actually, I realized something when I was actually tearing apart my computer. Um, do you remember before I got the Elgato I had, I got a different one, the one that actually goes inside the fucking computer? Yeah. So you don't have the loss of information by using cords. When I took out my graphics card, I realized this computer does have one of those slots. It's just my graphics card is so fat it covered it up. I was like, God damn it. <laughs> oh, well. You learned many things inside the guts of your computer. Some things that man was not meant to know. Or at the very least, annoying things. Eh? Ooh. Ooh. I think I think most of that story got out of the way in the the what you call it? The last episode of Let's Talk After You, so I don't think we need to go over that again. Unless you feel like expanding about exactly what you did, but I feel like that'll only in invite a certain amount of, of uh armchair quarterbacking. Huh? Sorry, I was looking at the, I was looking at the chain. I didn't hear what you said. Oh, I was just I was just saying that I think we got the the meat of your computer story out on Let's Look FGO. I don't know if you want to go into like details of what all your problems were cuz uh, one we've talked about it and two people may just try and armchair troubleshoot for you, which I know is annoying. It is. Well, yeah, no, I as I said, a part or all the parts didn't fucking work. That's all the I returned all the parts. Well, I guess here's something I could talk about. So we all know that um, Amazon is a sole sourcing corporation, but they're a scary um, sole sourcing corporation because they actually want to keep their customers happy. So I bought um, all three computer parts from Amazon. I bought an i5 CPU, um, 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM, and a yeah, an Asus motherboard. So. Um, after I figured out, all right, all this shit isn't going to work. I'm just going to return it all. I packaged it all up back, back nice. Contact, uh, went on Amazon.com and was like, hey, you, I'm returning this shit. And they're like, all right, drop up the uh, CPU and the RAM at your local UPS store and we'll take it back. And I was like, cool. Then I was like, wait a minute. Only the CPU and, um, RAM? And they're like, yeah. I was like, okay. So I went and dropped off those two items, and I fucked myself up again because I accidentally put it on a gift card instead of my bank account. And I was all like, no! Like, I like to shop on Amazon, but I don't need, like, just 200 and something dollars just hanging out on my Amazon doing nothing. I'm like, I can use that money for other things. No, that's yeah, weird. that's not necessarily what you want to do, you know? Yeah, but so I called Amazon.com, and I was all like, hey, let me uh, talk to some people. Like, I understand people, um, like, try to, they're trying to, like, work on automated services and things that you can, like, do self-help, but sometimes when you have specific problems, you just can't do, you just can't do that. You have to talk to a person. So, after some futz around and yelling at, you know, ro robot voices, I was actually get to a person, and I was like, yeah, I accidentally put that on my, um, 
gift card account. Can you actually switch it over to my bank account? I was like, no problem. Let me just switch that over. I was like, sweet. So he said, yeah. So do you have anything else? Because, you know, that's what they're supposed to say. And I was all like, well, since I have you on the phone, let me ask. Why can't I return this motherboard? And they just said, yeah, basically, it's when you sell it, it's basically um, pegged as non-returnable. But if it's not working, we'll just reimburse you for the cost and you can just do whatever with it. And I was just all like, oh, okay. Yeah, and they, they can't it- take it back for whatever reason. But at the same time, it's like, hey, whatever, it doesn't work. What does it work? It doesn't work. So, yeah, we'll reimburse you. And I was just like, oh, okay. And I was all like, I was thinking about that over a while. I'm just like, yeah, Amazon probably makes enough money. They don't, they don't need the nickel and dime person. But I still think that's kind of crazy that they could just be all like, I'll just think you got it. Ah, we don't need it back. Just take your money back. Whatever. We're Amazon. Yeah. It's just like, God damn. That reminds me, though, of a funny story I saw on the Rooster Teeth podcast. Uh, Gavin said that he bought a Dremel something or other for, uh, I don't know, he was going to do slow-mo stuff with it because he also runs the Slow-Mo Guys YouTube channel. But he brought in the case to the podcast, the video component, popped it open, and he was like, yeah, there's no Dremel in here. There's just two cans of uh, Dr. Pepper. <laughs> and it sounds like, so the previous owner of that Dremel, uh, shenanigans Amazon, and they unpacked it, unboxed it, they took the power tool out, and they stuck two cans of Dr. Pepper in there to fool the weight and just sent it back for whatever reason during the return window. And it was like, wow, that's some, that's some next level <laughs> shit right there. And Am- Amazon didn't open it. Why would they open it? it? It probably passed through a computer that said it weighed about the right amount and just like, okay, well, we got it back. And it just popped out of the warehouse because it was a, it was apparently a local shipment, you know, like a local mm-hmm. delivery. Yes, uh, Gus drank the Dr. Peppers, which was a little weird. But hey, man, sometimes you just need some pep. Sometimes you just need some pep. All right, so let's hear. I'm gonna get me. My PS4. Is that something? Yeah, I'm gonna get me a pizza. I'm gonna get me a hand me pizza. Get the book. Get the steel book for. Uh, Persona 5 in there. I'm just thinking because I do also have... I have some Amazon credit, but that's my leftover, you know, birthday and stuff money. Mm -hmm. Though I do admit, it's slightly worrying to me that at the moment, my Final Fantasy package is currently listed as $79.99 in the open orders. Uh, Oh, shit. Let me check mine. Ah! Hopefully that has... I mean, I got that... I'm pretty sure I got all the gift card credit. It doesn't matter. So, like, I'll just suck it up if it... If the special um, deal or whatever went away in the six months or whatever it's been, but hopefully they remember that. I probably have the confirmation email somewhere if I really wanted to fight somebody about it. I don't. Omega I don't doesn't usually fight fight people on things though. It's like, well, it's wrong. Return it. And I gotta be honest. I want most of the stuff that's in the special edition, not the big, not the big boy box special edition, just the regular special edition. I want most of that deluxe stuff anyway, like the fucking soundtrack. Oh, actually, that's a what's up thing. Uh, Final yeah, Fantasy VII talk- remake demo came out. Yeah. And we both played it. You weren't yeah, sure we you were going to play it. Well, cool. here's the thing. Like, from what I understood, the demo was just, like, the first part of oh, the Oh, yes, Ragnar- the demo is the part we've all seen before. This is just, like, the first time they've released it as a public downloadable cut. Yeah, so I was just all like, so technically, I'm not really going to see anything new. But, and when I play the game, when I get it anyway, I'm just going to be going over through this part again. So I was just all like, eh. But... Omega got me was all like, you should listen to the OST, though. It's good. I was like, God damn it. It's the music. The music. And I can't remember. What is my Amazon password? God damn it. It has to be one of these two. Why do I have so many passwords? But yeah, so I played it. Oh, it was only like an. Ah, so yeah, I was like, an, it was only. Like, so people were saying it was one to three hours. I assume the three hours was either you like dialed it up to very, very hard or whatever and played it on the hardest difficulty and or you suck. Um, I mean, I beat it in 40 minutes. Yeah, I played it on normal, and I did okay. I think I did it in about an hour, though part of that was because I was... That was my first science, and I streamed to Discord, so I had a lot of the peanut gallery chattering at me about stuff. I'm checking my gift card balance. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, I got enough in there. Okay, I'm just gonna say I forgot my fucking password. Have you forgotten your Amazon password? Or something, because I've tried all the passwords i got, and it's not working, so I'm gonna be mm. like, what the fuck? Either that or... No, my caps lock, like, caps lock ain't on. Yeah, we ain't no troubleshoot something. I mean, I don't, it's, the thing you guys are asking, they're asking me about L5R stuff, because they can't not. They, yeah, no, they're really, they're really, really going on uh, L5R. Ho- hopefully they can hold that enthusiasm and sit on it for, like, six months, because I'm, they've yeah, literally, <laughs> an, they've literally announced a source book that I'm like, well, that perfectly lines up with what the fuck I'm doing. I'm not doing anything until that comes out, for sure. 
because I want it. Uh, but we we've developed a lot of interest. What am I doing? I'm looking at my folders for my PDFs. Let me see if I have a big map. Somewhere. Like everyone's like making uh, characters and stuff. I'm like, I'm waiting till we actually have like a campaign game right up before I'm actually gonna get started. Well, and the beauty. Well, obviously. So some of it's just new game stuff. Okay, so now I'm in. All right, cool. Now well, where is my? He's in. It'll be under open orders, I think, because it's a pre-order. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. If we're still. Ah uh, yeah, it's a, mine says seventy nine ninety nine now. Oh wait, no, no, it's a, no, wait, no, it's total. My, wait, no, my total says sixty one fifty three though. Oh, so your total, all right. That might just be that might just be me not looking right. Let me yeah, it's, it should be it should be above it. Amazon. Because it says check. uh just so I can have my peace of mind. Mm-hmm. Open orders. Uh yeah, where it says it's uh, arriving April tenth April tenth, like above that. Oh. Uh well I don't see that fully, but I'll check order details. It doesn't expand. Oh yeah, yeah, grand total sixty. There we go. Okay. Okay. Sweet. All right, yeah, we all right. Everything's fine. Everything is fine, just like this game. Fuck I was yeah, thinking it about is. it. This game, um, it's blowing my mind. Let's see, this is like here. We're getting a remake twenty three years after the original. Yes. So there are gonna be people who weren't even bored playing this for the first time, and they will be and adults. Yeah, it's just like that blows my mind. Like I'm like I'm seeing all these scenes. I'm just like, oh my god. And then you see like articles online. I'm not even sure this was real or not. Of someone like, I saw it in our Discord. Someone posted it of someone having a picture of Aerith and going, "Who is this girl?" And I'm just all like, Ooh. "Yeah, I, I don't know if that was fucking with somebody. I don't know, but there's probably actually people oh, doing that. Yeah, and there right. might, might not just be in um, what's the word I want to use? Um, news, uh, reporting." I can't think of the I mean, yeah, it, a lot of video game coverage is very clickbaity these days. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lot of shenanigansy. So I don't, I don't know if they were just trying for a thing. Yeah. I don't know, but it's still the thought of like, oh my god, all these, like all these people are just not gonna know, and they're gonna get into this, and they're gonna have a fucking blast. Like I had a blast with the demo. Like Thirsty Jesse is like my favorite character so far. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They've done a, they've done a lot with the fact that everything is voice acted and like full mm -hmm. fully scenified stuff. Mm -hmm. They have some pretty because it's all it's basically an action RPG now. It's got some mm -hmm. it's got some timed elements, but it's still mostly mostly. I active. really like I like how they I I like what they did with the active time bar. Yeah, um, uh, I'm not thrilled about the button placement, but that's yeah, just me. X like, IQ. I, I, that's my instinct I is to make. jump with X. Yeah, I think it's Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, I hit X a lot more than I needed to, but that's just be something I have to get used to. But I do like the ATB because basically the way it worked in um, the demo is basically as you attack and take damage, you fill up uh, one of two ATP bars. ATP bars, yes. And you'll probably Wait. get more bars as you level up or whatever. Maybe, yeah. We don't know. Stack, stack a couple commands in there. Yeah, but basically when you get a um, fill up, you can basically use an ability or magic. And I was like, that's that's interesting. That's that adds like a little bit of level of play because it means you basically just can't stand at the back and smash your um, magic ability. You have to wait in there, um, hit a few things, and then back up. And I'm assuming there's going to be like abilities or equipment that will just like you know maybe do auto charge your um, your ATB, AT bar or ATB. I got to remember that. Um. Or whatnot. It sounds they're, they've added like a lot of levels because Final Fantasy VII for the time was kind of crazy, especially with the materia system of yeah. And we we didn't get into any of that at all. Though obviously yeah, no, you, different people had different spells, so I assume they have a different materia slots. Like um, I very much like the fact that you can see the materia in the Buster Sword, mm -hmm. which like is what those slots are for. They've always been for that. Just the details on the PS weren't really able to render it. Yeah. Uh, similarly, you know, everybody's got the smoothed out models. There's a lot more flexibility, you know. Um, Barrett's got some extra details, like his gun arm is clearly, like, strapped and locked into place. Mm -hmm. It's pretty interesting. Uh, That's like I said, um, you can only a play A lot the game. of extra characterization to Barrett in this first part, which I like. Yeah, I, I'm still kind of, like, eh, about his English VA, though. Everyone else, I'm like, yeah, no, you sound great. But Barrett, he, like, mm, I don't know. Like, how do I want to put this? He's trying a little too hard to be, like, uh, I need, I need... I mean, he is an angry black man. Yeah. 
and ho- yeah, I guess that- presumably they hired somebody of African American descent to be his VA because I we have <laughs> those now they exist. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I don't remember what the normal name of the city of lies is, but yes, there's a there's a town in Rokugan that's normally called the city of lies. So let's see. Oh, I was checking my orders. Yeah, but yes, the the demo is really good. Um, they do a lot with the characters. Jesse is just horny on main. Like you thought she was that way before, but this like really sells it. <laughs> Cloud is just like I'm dead inside. Hi, I'm Cloud. I'm here for the money, which is which is the appropriate level Cloud should be at in the game right now. I love it. Like mm. Barrett's trying to tell him about the fucking planet dying and the man, man, soldier boy, and and Cloud is just like, so you're gonna pay me for this, right? <laughs> you did not pay me enough for this. Also, Be- I love it. I commented on this multiple times. Did you notice, especially those first couple combats until you get Barrett in the party, the Avalanche guys just fucking run on ahead and ditch you to fight the bo- the boots? Oh yeah, you see them like like you see them like hanging out like in the shadows, or they dash ahead. And they fucking yeah. leave you behind. Like, bye, loser. Oh, <laughs> oh, it's so good. the The game has a lot of love in it just in the first like hour. Mm-hmm. I I personally felt like Scorpion Tail Man was a little for a first boss. He was a little chunky. Yeah, um, it had a bunch of, like, you can definitely say the bosses have various stages, like, you have yeah. your first combat stage, and then you get the stage where it has the generator. Had, like, in a... what was it, three or four phases? I think three, I want to say. But, you know, I do like the fact that it wasn't just a run up and hit it boss. Yes, they were, um, <clears throat> the bosses actually have strategy, like, in the yeah. arenas and stuff, and it's, it's good for a game like this to like vary stuff up because there were some fights that gave me a little trouble. Uh, I did not die on the boss. I died on the escape afterward when they sent those punchmans and the turrets after you, and I just got clobbered because boy, those punchmen sucked. They dodge a lot. They're very dodgy and they're very hitty. Um, Cloud's Punisher mode because Cloud's special ability is he has a stance system worked mm-hmm. really well. Where if you guard, you auto counter. Mm-hmm. So they just punch themselves to death on you. Yeah, no, it was it was a a little bit rough at points, but that's that's okay because it's just a tutorial, and obviously you know you're working out all the enemies. They've got some enemy variation, which is good. Mm-hmm. They've got a lot of environment variation, which is good. Like just in Maka Reactor One, you actually see some different stuff. Like there's the scaffolding, there's actually inside, there's all that stuff. There's a train station outside. Yeah, they definitely simplify. Like they kind of simplified the Maka Reactor like uh, sequence overall because. I don't know if you remember. Remember Final Fantasy VII? Wait, no, it wasn't. It wasn't in. No, it wasn't the first Mako. It was a later one because you had Tifa at it. But they always had a bunch of weird gimmicks. Like I'm, I think it had to have been the, like the second one that you attack, where you Cloud, um, Cloud Bear and Tifa all have to get behind these giant ass buttons, and you all have to hit them at the same time. Yeah, we'll and... see if they if they keep that sort of stuff in. But may, hopefully they'll make it a little more freeform. We'll yeah. see. Because and that's the thing. The demo doesn't even like. Now, the demo does show you the, what you're going to be doing a little bit next, because it's like, the next thing you do is you jog out, and you're going to run into Aerith, and you're going to get chased by Shinra guys. Yeah, I hope they up. actually kind of expand on the... It looks like what the, they're going to do from the little preview at the end. Yeah. Because, um, I, I said, I haven't played Final, the original Final Fantasy VII in over a decade, I want to say. It's a long time. It is a long I time. I have it accessible. I only have it on my PS3. Because the game, the, unfortunately, PS Network is a little weird about, um, what you call it, uh, keeping your licenses. Like, a PS1 classics on PS3 are not all the same as PS1 or PS2 classics on PS4. <laughs> um, like, for instance, I, my, I bought Hotline Miami for my PS3, but I, and Hotline Miami 2, that's how I beat those games, because I'm awful on the computer. I'm sorry. I know a lot of people are going to be like PC Master Race, but I'm just, my reflexes are no goo on keyboard. I need thumbsticks. Um, but I was able to download both of those on my PS4. So, uh, same with my copy of Vanilla Fibbage. I just owned that on the PS3, and I could download it on my PS4 and run it there if I wanted to. Ooh. But yeah, I um, um, I don't, I don't know if I have a copy of PS of um regular Final Fantasy VII. Whatever, it's like ten bucks. I could buy it again. You could yeah. buy it on a fucking phone if you wanted. Actually, I could probably get it on Steam if I really wanted to. I wouldn't. You don't really need a controller for Final Fantasy VII because it's still a. Uh, the original version is still, you know, you go into the battle map and stuff. Mm-hmm. I said, I think my friend said he's gonna give me all of his old games, and I think he has like seven through nine. I'm just be like, yes, excellent. 
solid. And so he's like just trying to get rid of stuff, and uh, we've been bros for years. Yeah, and I'll just say that um, as as I hoped for, the the soundtrack is just good. Like they could have yes. done some stuff with it, but they kept the original theme, which you've already seen through the longer the longer opening movie, which the demo uses the shorter version. But they, they still do that thing I talked about, where they let little bits of One Winged Angel as a late motif play in it. It's like mm-hmm. an ominous thing. That's cool. Cloud has a couple of PTSD flashbacks. You don't hear or see Sephiroth yet, but like there's some weird feathers and stuff. It's a little, just a little bit fucky, a little bit mind fucky. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that'll build as time goes on. Um, though they do show some more cutaway scenes with the Shinra guys, which is good. Yeah, they did something I don't remember if they actually did in the original game. Um, do you remember if um the bomb actually took out the reactor in the first game, or did Shinra actually? I believe it. Did though I wouldn't put it past it if there was a line of dialogue that like Shinra arranged for stuff to fail. I, honestly, if I had to guess, I would guess that they're probably trying to soften it up so we look like we're in today's modern climate. Actually, playing successful terrorists might be a little, you know, <laughs> not up to moral snuff. Um, now we're just playing incompetent eco terrorists. Yeah, I'm about to say that. <laughs> Well, I was looking at the package, and I was like, that's a, actually kind of a small bomb. And it was. <laughs> it didn't It didn't do all the stuff it was supposed to do. Also, it wasn't set and detonated correctly. So, yeah. uh, Shinra helped things along, because they need it for, um, for propaganda stuff they're doing. Because Shinra are super... Like, that's the thing. You'd never think Shinra weren't the assholes, because they drop a whole sector plate. Like... E- even if we were actually setting off bombs, blowing up Maka reactors, and there was some collateral damage... That's nothing compared to the amount of collateral damage to kill, like, five dudes. <laughs> of which, the people they actually killed, they just shot. Like, they just... Um, the spoilers if you don't know Final Fantasy VII already or don't remember, but... Uh, uh, that's... Uh, Jesse, Biggs, and Wedge just, just die there. They're killed yeah. defending the pillar. <laughs> which means they didn't have to sink it because the... Because Cloud, Tifa, and Barrett get away. <laughs> yep. So, yeah. It yes, definitely exactly. looks like... Shinra, like, doesn't lose any value. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, Lucky. Um, as I said, we're going to begin through all that. But I'm, gonna see, I'm excited to see where where they've expanded upon this. Because they have said that this is... Even though we're only doing... I don't think they've actually said where it's going to end. But I'm pretty sure it's going to end at the... Uh, Basically, at the escaping from Midgar. Yes, most people assume it's going to end at, at the point where you would leave Midgar. Because so, that's a, that makes a good point to cut off the game, because in the second part, when it comes out in five years or whatever, they can be like, okay, your tutorial section is now that thing, that flashback, blah, 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 etc. And kind of figure out what they're going to do about the world map in a completely different game. Because i got to be honest, I don't know what they're... There's so many things about... Uh, Seven remake as a project overall. I don't know what the fuck they're gonna do, but yeah, <clears throat> the Midgar segment is very well self-contained if they can expand on it, and they will because there's a lot of extra lore and shit to cover. Mm-hmm. If if anything else, just making Midgar as big as it actually is will help. Well, as I said, fi- and it comes out in five years. Yeah, because they'll have the they have the engine, they have the system, um, their combat system. So basically, all they have to do is all their new. And they also have all the baseline models and stuff for all the main characters. Yeah. Well, some of the main characters, I guess. Yeah. There's just Vincent and Yuffie. You can't. No, wait, Kate Sith. That's right. Mm-hmm. Uh, though who knows? Because of reasons, we might see a cameo from him in this game too. You never know. <laughs> like that's that's the thing. the The compilation of Final Fantasy VII is so huge that like there are so many little details. Um, they even alluded to that in the demo during the conversation between Heidegger and the Shinra president. He's like, yeah, those avalanche guys might have been the ones who tried to assassinate you a while back, which is connected to um, one of the phone games of Final Fantasy VII where you played a different group of avalanche who did try to kill the president. Like, that's that's the kind of integration I'm looking for in this game is you just clump all that shit together. Yeah, you also see other things. Like, if you read the description of the Buster Sword... Um, I can't remember what it says, but you automatically know if you played the game. You know, it's like, like you're like no Crisis Core. Yeah, ah! there's so much, so much canonicity and stuff built up. 
Well, mm-hmm. uh, Vesper, that's just if they remake Crisis Core. Which, if they do that too, I won't. I won't be mad. But <laughs> that won't be right away. That's not going to jump in front of the other ones. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. So, uh, they. I'm hoping they do a lot of canon integration. Like I said before, they did a lot of good stuff with the soundtrack. Um, they did a good variation of uh the bombing run mission with all the the right beats and stuff. They did bring back the Mako reactor theme, but they also do oh. the kind of like I said, the Kingdom Hearts kind of diegetic thing where. When you go into a fight, they switch up the music to a more active version. I'm just like, damn, this soundtrack is going to be so good. It's going to slap so hard. <laughs> but yeah, that's the... It's only a one-hour demo, and we've we've already talked for about 30 minutes about it. But I need to take a quick break and get up and go to the bathroom, so I'm going to pause here a second. Mm-hmm. Okay, we live. God, is that the current temperature or not? I hope it's not the current temperature. Google tells me the weather is 53 degrees. What is the temperature right now? Google! Anywho, um, I think after talking about... Oh, Jesus. It's only four degrees above freezing here. What? Oh, God. Yeah, remember how it's going to not be winter? Supposedly? I don't know. That's going to end soon? Uh, I don't know. I like the cold and dark. Yes, good. Excellent. (laughs) I prefer to be warm. Well, like I've always told, I, I've always told people, um, I like rather be cold because I can always layer up. Um, when well, it gets hot yeah, I guess that's what I mean by the fact that I like to be warm. Like, <laughs> I like to be snug, but also my idea of being s- s- snug is different than other people. Yeah, like, um, like I don't like even though like I was born in the summer, I don't like summer at all. Like the sun is up for way too long. Like, like half the country starts fucking burning. Like. All there's um like all these crazy events going down. I never have money for any of them, and it's just fucking hot. Like no, that's interesting. You so yeah, you were that's right. You are born in summer technically. Yeah, actually, not even technically. You're pretty uh, pretty central. Summer's later than people think it is. Yeah. Um. Uh. Me, I'm a I'm a winter child, and uh, part of it's just living down here so long. But uh, man, I don't I don't do the cold so good. Like my fa- like honestly, my favorite season is the fall, um, because that's because you don't usually get the crazy allergies that you get in spring, and everything's cooled down, but you still you we still have pretty nice weather, because um over here in the Pacific Northwest, our winters well, relatively speaking, our winters aren't that cold, we you know we rarely get any snow, but we still get a fuck ton of rain, and it's just like yeah, it's wet today, great. And, you know, when you're inside, you know, rainy days are great. But when you got to be outside and do shit, you're just all like... Oh, fuck yeah, I know. Uh, that. That's because in Florida, summer is the rainy season where it's like, is it going to thunderstorm this afternoon? Check yes or yes. <laughs> Which is why I own an ups for my computer. Yeah, so, like, um... And it's just a pain but, in the butt. So, like, like, a lot of people here, like, um, you just get used to being rained on. Because we don't have... We very, very rarely have heavy rain. But we almost have constant light rain. Actually, so now you make me think. I gotta look at Google Maps right now. Mm. Is is the Pacific Northwest on a on a similar latitude to like uh uh? Because funny fun fact about like Britain, or well, that also yeah it is actually. Uh, assuming that Google's map is is Google Maps are not like squidged weird. Um, mm. the south of England is on a similar latitude to uh like Washington and Oregon. Mm-hmm. Now, the reason why so, it's not fucking freezing up there, because the UK really is about the same height as Canada up on the globe, is because of Gulf Stream stuff. Yeah, yeah, um, Science. But um, there, it's often just rainy and, rainy and windy. Mm-hmm. Rarely does it get super snowy. Yeah. Um, I've, get snow I've like visited every- London several times. I have relatives in England. Um, and uh, most of the time you're there, it's at least overcast, if not drizzling. But... Very rarely have I seen it fucking go balls out pouring in England. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's how it is here. And so, yeah, like, <laughs> when I when I got out of the military and um, I got home, like, I, re- I remember this. I was basically, I had a window seat and I was just watching over and we we're starting to descend. I'm above the cloud layer. It's the sun is shining. It is bright and everything. The plane goes down. I go underneath the fucking cloud cover, and it just it is just automatically overcast, gray, bleak, slightly raining. I'm like, "Yep, it's good to be home." And that's how that works. That's how that works. Um, 
Yeah, actually, uh, if I remember correctly, I think statistically, I think Washington State is like the third or second or third state that gets the least amount of sunshine in the U.S. It's because you're well, you're literally in a rainforest up there. Yeah, that's funny. You got to think about that because of the way rain shadow works. Um, that's that's all in the rainy zone off the Rockies. Yeah, that's why we have yeah we have the Olympic rainforest. Which I think is the only North American rainforest, I think. Because all the other sectors are like the Amazon, which are in the rain shadow. Well, not the rain shadow, but the rain area of uh, the Andes and stuff. Yeah, because... Science, bitches. Climates. It's Mm -hmm. important. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, Washington State is actually really interesting because basically in western Washington, where I live, it's very rainy. But then you get to eastern Washington, which is on the other... Well, it's not directly on the other side of the mountains, but... It's close enough. We have actually a lot of um, not full on deserts, but we have plateaus, bad yeah, land. You're in the you're in the the shadow of the Rockies, which means you're either uplands or uh, deserts. You know, it's the yeah. same kind of terrain that you find in like Utah or Nevada and stuff. Mm-hmm. So we actually have like a, it's very interesting that Washington, like we have a very diverse um, um, selection of. Um, Climates. We even have some. I think we have some wetlands up in the peninsula. Probably. If you if you get if you got a lot of rainfall and you got some close a- locations close to water, you'll get wetlands. Yeah. Because that's all about water retention and sea level. Yeah. Like fucking Florida. Big chunks of this place are under sea level. <laughs> uh, and have very high water tables. So just if you've actually looked at, at maps of Florida, most of the southern half of this state where all the Everglades and shit is is just wetlands. It just, it just so happens to be that the coast or some other intervening areas are slightly higher, so it's not just the ocean right now. And in the yeah, past, so. it was, and then someday it probably will be once again. Yeah, like I said, like honestly, like I, I really like living here in the Pacific Northwest just for those because I said we got volcanoes, we just got regular mountains, we got this, 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 we got fuck ton of rivers, we got the ocean, we got a rainforest. It's like it's a very diverse state, and I just like I just like the Pacific Northwest as a whole. It's very weird, mm-hmm. which is kind of its people. Oh, uh, trust me, I know all about that. I sunk way too much research into Seattle for a Night- Night's Black Agents campaign we never went anywhere with. Yeah, welcome to me. But that's also Night's Night's Black Agents, familiar cities and stuff that just encourages you to do that. Mm-hmm. So before we spent, hold on, oh, I got to check the mission clock. Before we spent ten minutes about the weather. Uh, I was going to say that us being done talking about the Final Fantasy VII Remake is a perfect point for us to jump off into one of two topics, depending on what you feel like. You can either gush about Rune Factory 4 on the Switch for as long as you like, or we could talk mm-hmm. about gotcha stuff. Uh, I really don't have that much to say about Rune Factory right now. Let's talk about gotcha. Okay. So we're doing gotcha stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. You mentioned this on Let's Like FGO, but we should remind everybody here, you have stopped playing Arknights because you have a full-time job and you don't have time in your life. And I have continued to play Ark Knights because I like it a lot. Okay, I'm rolling again. I, I I love how Ghost Lucky waits to kick in until just when I turn to ask him a direct question. Yeah, no, that happens a lot. So it, it's, it's worse for me because um recently, like this happened yesterday. I only have Ghost, which means I can still hear you talking, but I can't respond. Yes, the your voice or whatever is not leaving your your computer. So I'm just all like, wait, what is happening? And then he's like, and Megas is like, of oh, the lucky go ghost. I'm just like over here. I literally went no, and Faith just cue a rabbit board. spinning into the void. Nani, Nani. Okay. But yeah, Ark Knights. Ark yeah, Ark. so I like Ark Knights. I really do. But I was actually like, um, I was putting all the gotcha games on a scale, and I actually like. I kind of shocked myself, but I discovered I think I like Girls Frontline more than I like Ark Knights. Um, like, especially with this most recent event, um, continuing um, turbulence. Oh, my God. I love Salt Mod so much. Oh, oh my God. She's great. Like, I got her to, like, Mod 2, and I just probably need, like, 100 more combat reports to get her to 115 so I can get her to Mod 3. I am slowly working. Well, I wish I was gaining more surplus EXP, but farming Farewell Scarecrow doesn't seem to give me much. And I don't know yeah, if that's, that's because... That- it's that way, or is it because uh, my my M4 and my UMP, is it U- I think it's UMP45, are, are slurping up because they're they're neuromodded. They're mod 2 right now. Yeah. I've been working on but, those. 
Yeah, I'm actually, I'm actually not. I, I'm doing my scarecrows. I missed yesterday, but I think I'm still on track to get Barrett. But um, yeah, they gave us a lot of time with this event. It's mm-hmm. still going until the 16th, I think. Yeah, I think I need just need to make sure I get another. What was it? Seven days. As long as I get my 60 for the next seven days, I'll get the 777 box. That's good. I'm, I'm also on track. I think I'm in the 500, so I'm closer, but I've also been doing but it I'm also, regularly. Like, I'm also trying to get through the story because, this, again, I forget this sometimes, but Girls Frontline, even if it's a lot of wordy, even if it's a lot of text, it has a really good story. It does. I wish I had more time to read it, but I'm so yeah. disjointed with all the different story events I wasn't good enough to complete. I need to, like... Yeah. I, I will at some point. Like, right now, I'm just... I log in every day. I do my 60 crates. I, I do intelligence. I like talking about games you enjoy. I love the extra stuff in that game enough that I'm like, I'll catch up on the story eventually. Yeah, yeah I know. Like, same here. Um, like Continuum Turbulence, I'm done with part with chapter one. I could move on to chapter two, but I'm like, well, I don't really need any of the drops there. And it's just going to get harder. I like the story, but I know they've spoiled me. I know that because this is a story event, they're going to add it back to the archives later, and I can get the story parts. Right now, I want to make sure I get um, M82 and hopefully farm some uh, for Python, maybe, at the end. I don't know. Yeah. So, have you had any... Do you, have you unlocked Hawk units and had any use to any call to use them? Uh, yeah. Um, I'm used them... You use them in Chapter 2, mm-hmm. but... Well, there's like, also I, one map in Chapter 1 where you can... Uh, you've got a heavy... Yeah, and I didn't. I didn't use it because, unfortunately, uh, since I haven't been playing as much, my um, I only have the one hawk unit that they give you, and they're only like level like thirty something. So actually, like the reason why um, what's happening right now is I'm actually trying to train it up, and I'm burning through my um, chips trying to get more. Um, but when I I did use um because I leveled my BGM up just for because I heard that it would be good for this. Um, and that's the free one. So I did use them in that map. And um, the first moment, the first moment you zoom in and like the screen cuts away to that the Hawk team sitting in the back, f- firing a, an anti tank missile, and just watch the little distance meter <laughs> tick down until blam. I'm just like, yes, good. <laughs> this is what I want in this game. <laughs> yeah. And actually, yeah, yeah. So actually, I really do like 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 Girls Frontline. Just like. It just has so many fiddly bits. So many fiddly bits. And that's what I love about it. I really do. And hopefully Ark Knights will probably, with like base con- connection and stuff, will get get there. But also it might not, because maybe that's not why. Uh, I don't know if I've ever if I've talked about this with you, but I've talked about it with the audience a couple of times. Like, did you know that, Um, I think it's, is it Hieroglyph or Hypergrid? I don't remember. But the, the dev team behind Ark Knights used to be part of Micah team, who make Girls Frontline, but they split over creative differences. So... Arcanites is kind of the game they wanted to make out of Girls Frontline, uh, oh. which is probably why there's some thematic similarities and like they have some of the similar artist selection and stuff. Uh, yes, Rogue Robin. Um, they did add the fairy thing. What fairy thing? Where? Which one? Oh, the um, the uh, the fairies. You know, the fucking drones. Oh, like just in general, the fairy system. Oh yeah, they added yeah. that a long time ago. Yeah. Basically, fairies just add buffs to your um, teams. They also add a special ability that um, that can proc on your team, and they have a special talent. Yeah, so basically, each fairy is unique depending on the type of thing. And then, because there's like uh, there's parachute fairy, there's the illumination fairy, there's Top fairy, best fairy. fairy, all kinds of stuff. And then they have generic talents, which are just like, oh, you because uh, you can calibrate them and switch them. Yeah. Um, so it's like, yeah, you can. Uh, just get damage up or accuracy up, and also they do fun stuff. Yeah. But I, I I'm, I'm with you, games. like Omega. Like I, I kind of fell out of it, so I've kind of lost where I am in the story, which is crazy, especially when I see where the story is right now. I'm all like, what the fuck just happened? Yeah, like, I know. Like, I know that this is the segment, which is like where we get the infamous Aro Dinner Gate. Yeah, which I did. I great. did make sure when they mentioned that to read some of that because it's funny. It is funny. But yeah, there's a there's a lot of shit going on, and I need I need to just take some time and catch up. But not right now because we're doing lots of different stuff. Yeah, uh, like... but honestly, Girls Frontline, I think I'm at a good enough point. Well, mostly it's because they keep adding neuromods to my best guns. But it's like with, with M4 and UMP in my uh, as neuromod, you know, they're crawling up those levels. It's like, uh, you know, it depends. Because I'm unfortunately I'm going to complain about Azure in a little bit. Oh, um, because I le- on the one hand I like that game. But also, comparing it to the four games I'm playing, it is the slowest to play, and I I like playing it the least. 
um, just because even on blue stacks, it's just to me it feels so sl- like I'm on um, by blue stacks. I mean, it's emulated on my PC now. I moved it off my phone because to save space because um, I was running out of space. But like, it's just to me, it's so slow moving. I have to f- tap a square. The ship girls have to haul their ass all the way over to that square. The submarines have to play their dumb submarine animation, or my meow officers play the dumb meow officer animation. There's the battle. That's automated. That's fine. I tick away. Then when the battle ends, I got to click through like five million screens. It's not really. It's like four, but still, you have to click one specific place over and over again, and then you get out, and then you got to go move again, and then sometimes enemy units move, and it's just like, God, I wish you were faster because it's just, for me, it's just so easy to get distracted or forget what I'm doing because I just don't care about all the faff, you know? Like, I I like the story. I I like the characterization. I like doing the extra stuff, like the coloring books or the dumb decryption or whatever, but just... The actual gameplay to me takes time and, like, it's just hard for me to multitask without whatever else I'm doing being way more interesting to me. I don't know. Like, you can level those same exact same complaints at a girl's front line. Like, shoot, girl's front line's even slower because you have to usually move multiple of your own units, which go into battles, and then the entire enemy map moves at once. Usually in Azure Yeah, but usually I'm I'm focused on something in girl's front line, right? Like, it's it's... When I'm doing a map for the first time, that's the center of my attention. I am playing girls frontline. Um, I am like, I'm moving the units and figuring out what I'm going to do next. Sometimes I'm, if it's a complicated map, I might be checking a guide to be like, so what's the way this game, the game wants me to do the thing, you mm-hmm. know, uh, like, and figuring out the extra steps and whatever. And then I step away, you know, I can, it's easy to switch back and forth. It's like, oh, it's an enemy turn. Let me look back. Are we done? Am I back? Can I play again? Um, and, when not that, when I'm doing my, like, daily runs of of Scarecrow for mm-hmm. whatever, I literally, because Girls Frontline is also on my PC, obviously, it won't fit on my phone right now, period. That's it's one of the reasons why I was like, okay, well, fuck, I have to move to a new computer. Uh, I just plug down my team, I set planning mode for two turns, I click go, when it's done, I come back, I have calculator open on my computer, and I just add a, add a digit to see how many runs I did. So, it's just... To me, the workflow just flows better because that's the thing about Girls Frontline. When you, like, turn on planning mode or auto stuff, it just goes through. Like, those girls keep going. Uh, that's basically what I want Azure Lane to do. I want him to, like, if I've got auto battle on, click through my fucking rewards. I don't care. I got some shit. Nobody cares. Move on. Is it a new ship? Spring the new ship screen on me. Other than that, don't care. Move through. I don't need to see XP bars go up like that. Like, that's the thing that Girls Frontline has really done is it's really streamlined its UI, right? Well, yeah, you just have to rapidly tap through it. Fuck, for a while then, I wasn't even, I was tapping so fast, I didn't even see how many fucking, um, boxes I was getting. I was just like, yeah, I I don't get boxes. When you're on, when you're planning mode and it autos through that, you don't see it. It just says, got reward, close it, move on. I'm like, what? I had to actually, like, manually watch it a couple times to make sure I was getting the drops. So, yeah, I don't know. I just think that Azure Lane could, like, I'm physically, I've invested money in Azure Lane. Um, and also, I like all the girls, but I don't, so I'm not like gonna quit anytime, but I, I'm like, if if Azure Lane was to launch a user survey today, I would be like in those fill in boxes saying, "Your UI needs to be faster, please. Uh, make it so I can click anywhere, or or stuff moves faster, or whatever. I don't know. Ooh. It's a it's a whole thing. But people are asking about Russian results. Uh, for me, I'm I'm all set. I only need to get the 10k points, which I can to uh, get. Uh, what's what's which one's that one? Gangut? Yeah, Gangut, that's right. Gangut. Gangut. Um, uh, I don't know. It's Russian. I don't know. Gangut. That's the only oh. one I am missing. I have I got Chapiev on a build and I got Grozny and the other one whose name is too, way too fucking long on a build. I've built like two or three Soviet Russias. I'm so mad. Like I have I, enough to buy I, uh, um... I built a Minsk or bought a Minsk on the exchange because I don't care. Like honestly, I think I'm gonna take out my half built French fleet because I did awful in that event construction and drop wise um and turn them into a russian fleet because i think there's enough units for all that i don't know if there's i don't know if there's three main um well Gen- gangut's a battleship yeah gangut and soviet russia but i don't think there's a third one i don't think oh, yeah is avora is avora a light cr- a cruiser Should yeah avora's a cruiser mm-hmm. Hmm. why did we yeah. not put kirov in she has a model that's that's the thing. Well, it's like why we don't have John to Arc in the other. Um, I mean, I guess, but also it's like for balancing. Like with with um Sardinia, they managed to put all six in. Yeah, I don't know. Like, but like with the no, no, they didn't put. Well, 
There was still a seventh one. There was still an extra one, but they made sure that you could actually, because I have the full Sardinia fleet. Yeah, there yeah, was yeah. Uh, three front row and three back row. Yeah, but it's like, like the Vichy Dominion don't doesn't have a full one. Um, oh, good. well, yeah, uh, it, it, they literally don't. I, my, I've mentioned my ha- my French fleet is half beat. It's also both Iris and Vichy. <laughs> there's, there's like what two or three of each. Yeah, it's and bad. as I said, we it's still haven't bad. got John to arc, which kills me inside. Yeah, they need to give us another one because uh, the Azure Lane John looks really good. Mm-hmm. But yeah, like for me, um. I have enough uh, points to get the two from the event shop. I've already made my 10 kill points, but I have no Soviet Russia, and it kills me inside. Yeah, I need that Soviet Enterprise. Mm-hmm. But, as I said, I'm actually playing Azure. I don't know. Also, right it's because there's been another collab with... Uh, you're asking the wrong... Vesper, do not talk to us. Talk to you. Maybe Panda, but mostly Art. If you want to know anything about the actual naval history, you're going to have to put up with Artemis. Yeah, <laughs> uh, they care a lot about that stuff in Azure Lane, which like I'm a history buff, but at the same time I'm not that focused on World War II battleships. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's who you got to talk to. They know all that stuff. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I barely remember what what. Uh, He's literally saying he doesn't know this stuff. Don't add him, fucking Vesper. Don't like their cruisers, me. I don't fucking know if uh, those names are not from. Uh, do we have a Tenryu? We don't have a Tenryu. Okay, then yeah. I don't, because here's also the other thing. Uh, Lucky, well, Lucky, I don't know. Did you ever try to play uh, Kantai? No, there was no English version, so it is like as I said, I don't like having to stare at a screen then flip through like several. Uh, yeah, guides. look at Moon Runes and then go back. Yes, no, yeah. I'm just, uh, I'm, yeah. So ni- neither of us were can cold guys, so we also don't get any previous memes. That's all over our heads. So yeah, I don't know, I don't know about ships and stuff. Um, I don't think they're in. Honestly, well, we've said this before. Azure Lane's a little skimpy with the ships. Like, other than the just nothing ships they put in every month, um, there's you usually only see brand new ships in a big burst, um, which may or may not be relevant because usually they're themed. Like, uh, we had the one that was Soccer Fleet not too long ago, which added a lot of ships I really liked, but whose names escape me right now because I'm bad with names. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, but you could go look them up. And then this one is obviously, this is a Northern Parliament event, so this is a big deal about all the Soviet ships because the games only had literally one for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, there's, uh, I think it's usually for Chinese New Year, but they bring back write-ups on Chinese ships, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a big cluster. Also, I've, ta- I've talked about this, especially, especially looking at, like, Arknights, because, like, if we were to build a gotcha game thirst level, right? Mm-hmm. Like... FGO, moderately thirsty. Like, some of the designs or Final Ascension arts are a little spicy, but because of the fact that most characters have multiple sprites, most characters have a non-spicy version, right? Yeah. Like, it's a, it's it's moderately thirsty. So I would say is Girls Frontline. Like, usually they're only really spicy in skins. Yeah. Um, Most of the default arts are tactical, obviously. Azure Lane, heavily thirst. Like, they're in a fucking desert in Azure Lane. Um, even the vanilla skins of those ships are like super thirsty sometimes. What's her name? Ch- Chapayev? I think it's how Chapayev. You know, that's all the. She has the thirsty skin and she is the thirsty girl. Exactly. Like, like she, she's an ice boat, but is showing a lot of cleavage and leg. Like honestly, uh, Soviet Russia, aka Soviet Enterprise, is remarkably modest, but even then, she has her break type skin, which is just, I guess, like we just strip down to your sportswear and sit in a chair. Because who doesn't do that when they get home? Am I right? Um, Arknights is like way, way down on the thirst level. None of their marketing campaign is about how horny they are. Like a lot of the a lot of the girls are cute, but most of them are dressed reasonably. Their skins aren't even that weird. Like their skins are like fashiony type skins. I actually like. I like honestly. Like I honestly think that's a point in Arknights. Uh, yeah, me. no. Like, like it's a very almost realistic design of the game. Like it's yeah. Just, People are just out there wearing shit. I love the way mm-hmm. the costumes are handled. I have mm-hmm. uh, bought both Cliff and Exu's costumes. And also, their prob- Skyfire's costume is probably coming out next, and I'm going to hopefully have enough Prime for that. You know, I should uninstall Girls Frontline off my computer and put on Arknights. Just so you I can... Cause that's the thing I was going to mention. The thing about Arknights is, other than maybe some time-limited events for, like, uh, welfare units, which mm. you may or may not need because... They're really the only "quote unquote" limited units in the game, other than I think, I think is it Neon is like they did a special limited unit for Chinese New Year, but I bet she'll come back also. 
Because that's the other thing about Ark Knights. It's really, really young. Like, it's way younger than most of these games. Like, I think Girls Frontlight had a year or two under its belt. Azure Lane was, like, a year old when it got ported over. Or more. Um, Ark Knights was only, like, a year older. And we're already starting to turn towards catching up to them. But, um... That's the thing, is that you, you could probably, especially because most operators are permanent, you could probably just sit on that game for a while and then come back to it when you have time, is what I was going to go for. Start the recording. They're, we got sidetracked in the ghost zone. Sorry. They're remaking the second season of Digimon, I think? Remaking, really? Or the series? I don't know. I'm not, like I said, I'm not a Digimon guy. I don't know for sure. But some anime questions were coming up, because the Azure Lane anime is actually coming back soon. Ah. Uh... Yeah, sorry, I ghosted there. Again, I lost my pizza order. I continue to starve. Thanks. Oh, you need that to live. The pizza. I... Series 1 reboot. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Series 1 reboot. So going all the way back to the intro. Still wasn't my thing, but... Mm. I don't know. I might watch it. I I need to catch up on so much TV right now. Like, it's... Part of it's the juggling, which we've talked about. Mm. But just... I just need to settle some time. There's a new season of Altered Carbon out. I haven't watched Lock and Key. Uh, I really need to watch Castlevania because there's like three seasons of that somehow. Somehow yep. Netflix snuck that up on me and I haven't started any of them. Uh, there's new episodes of Clone Wars coming out. I've watched the first two of those, but there's a new one today I haven't caught up on. And that's relevant for reasons. Actually, um... Let- I'm actually a couple weeks behind on My Hero. I just need to really? suck it up and... Yeah, I, I just... Because of computer switches and stuff, I just got kind of uh, out of yeah. sync. I need to just... I need to like block out in the afternoon and just hop on Funimation and catch back up. Yeah, I'm actually, I, uh, I was, that was something I was hoping we could talk about today, but if you're a couple weeks, Ooh, you're definitely I am not. not I am not current on... Uh, no, I haven't even uh, started that one. Heck. Oh, well. So I'll, I'll catch up. Don't you worry. And I'll be super hyped to talk about it. Just like I said, I'm all out of sorts with watching TV. I need to catch up on stuff. Excellent. Lucky's actually trying to make an effort to to stray away from watching straight anime. Because um, you know, I'm not, like anime is going to be like my one true love, but you got you to gotta move around sometimes. So... Like, I'm actually going to think I'm going to try and watch Alter Carbon here pretty soon. I've already started the third season of Castlevania, and I'm loving it. Yeah, Alter Carbon's uh-huh. really good. I guess I'm trying to go to the movies more. Like, uh, last, like, uh, like, uh, two weeks ago, I went to go see Sonic the Hedgehog. Two weeks before that, I went to go see, um, Star Wars. I was going to go see Onward this weekend, but I might hold off. I don't know. Oh. Uh... Well, so I'm pretty sure because we skipped that week, that means I don't think you've... Have you talked about the Sonic movie? No, no, I haven't, actually. Uh, well, let's let's just really quickly squish through some gotcha stuff. Um, yeah. So, let's see. We talked about Azure Lane. I think we talked about everything we need to do there. I'm just... I'm doing good at the event. I just wish the game ran a little smoother, because, like, Girls Frontline really has that... that Even though it's a, it's a very grindy game, it has it down to a science of just moving you through that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I will continue to play Ark Knights because I'm in there. I'm juggling four games. I can do it right now. And I've, uh, I've, so to speak, popped my Ark Knights cherry. I spent money on it. I bought the starter pack and I bought a monthly pass. Yeah, I've spent like, I think, 60 bucks on Ark Knights. So I'm not like, I haven't spent it particularly much, but. Yeah. I, said, I don't want to quit it. Like, I don't, but like. You just need time, you know? Yeah. It's, it's all a time thing. Um, uh, I've finally willed it down so I'm actually spending and regaining sanity. <laughs> that took me a long time, um, but yeah, I've I got it. The, honestly, the monthly pass is a really good deal because it goes for I really thirty wish days. You have to go with something like the, that. It goes for thirty days. It's not tied to an actual month. It just that's how long it lasts. You can stack up to three. It's only five bucks. You get six prime, I think, right away, and you get two hundred arundum and a sanity potion every day you log in. Which means Wait, you say basically, you, you say you can stack up to three monthly passes. Yeah, you can buy up to three in advance. They don't all execute oh, at oh, once, oh, but oh. basically you don't have to buy them again. Oh, okay. Um, I was like, what? So, you, no, you can't literally stack them as in they don't all activate at the same time, I'm pretty sure, but you can buy, like, two in reserve. So if you have, like, 15 bucks one one month but are going to be broke for the next two months, you can stack up those three months in a row. Uh, but basically the way it works is it gives you extra st- sanity potions, which are great, because now that I'm actually down to my sand level, I'm like, you know... 120 something is not a whole lot of sanity. Gonna <laughs> install or Arc Knight. Like 180. Oh, my computer. I, I gotta look it's at out! it. I gotta, uh, I gotta double check, but no, it's not a lot. It's not a super lot. I'm like level 37, I think. Mm. Um, so sanity potions are good, especially because they go away. So you have a reason to use them. Um, I do like that mechanic. 
the free prime is good because you never know when those funking costumes are going to come around and you're going to be like, shit, I need five coins I, or 15 coins to buy them, which is really the only thing you really, other than occasionally I have desperately spent some stuff. God, the internet. I'm so annoyed. Fucking that ro- that damn dirty rock. Don't worry, Quartzy. I still love you, but I'm mad at you because you you keep flaunting that you got Chen in like one ten roll. I rolled three three ten rolls, thirty rolls on that banner. No no six star period, but definitely no Chen. I stopped at my third. I got Swire, but no Dragon. And so I'm just gonna if I spend uh, head hunting permits or whatever, I'm gonna spend it on the new banner because that's siege and. So also this is an interesting thing. Um. I believe that the way the characters are written for Exusia's name, it's supposed to be a reference to ex, like a, a Greek word, exia, meaning excellence. So I don't know if that's oh. how you're supposed to pronounce her name, is as exia or exia or something. Um, mm. I'm not sure. Normally I just write it as exu for short, but exia is a lot easier to say. But um, also there's a fucking siege in the cert shop. I gotta get 80 certs in like 12 days. <laughs> Once Annihilation 2 opens back up, I got a fucking E1 cliff heart. I'm ready to get those permits. Oh, God, that's right. I could, oh, wait, I'll just do that on Han. <laughs> I can just auto my Annihilation 1, so I'll just do that. Yeah. Make sure I get that at least. But, yeah, so I'm like, uh, God, Arknights is so generous, though. Like, that's that's another reason why you don't want to quit. It's so, so friendly-like, you know? Like, mm-hmm. there's, like, multiple safety systems. You get um, recruitment which can get you higher level operators, at least, depending on your combo tags. Most of the time it's junk, but I saw top operator, top operator once. I'll see it again someday. Um, and I won't be dumb and I'll set specific tags because the first time I did it, I got my second Exia, which kind of sucked a little. Um, that's okay. At least she got a potential. because She's so good. She is my crutch. She is my <laughs> tiny angel crutch. Um, but, um, that's one safety system. Then you've got the certification system because you get gold gold certs for rolling high level units. Like if you have a, f- a four star with max potential, or you get any five stars, etc. Um, you get yellow certs in some forms, and mm-hmm. that rotates every couple of weeks. And if you you can buy five stars and six stars on them. Like right now, it's neural. I think is in the yellow cert shop, and siege is for sure. And I'm like. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cause I got a hundred, I got a hundred gold, o- gold those right now. And what's great is that you can get, you don't have to get like the highest tier. I think if you once you start getting four star yeah. dupes, uh, four star start- uh, max potential gives you, which because of the way recruitment works, you can lock in like um, fast redeploy or specialist period. That's a minimum of four star. There's no three star those. Yeah. So it, it's like, yeah, you have to play a little bit with the recruitment system, but I, um, like I said, sometimes you just get bullshit, but you move on. Um, and then there's actually a pity rate too. Like every banner, you get a guarantee. Your f- your first ten pull will give you at least a five star. And if you don't roll six stars for a while, you will that chance will climb. It's like how Fire Emblem did it, where it literally gets higher every time until you guaranteed to get it. Yes. Uh, Siege will stay in for I believe twelve days right now. So it's really generous. And uh, my pity rate is probably ticking up because I did I did thirty rolls. Yeah, it's per ten rolls technically. Um, cause I've gotten the, if you spend tickets, but yeah, like, like Devilish said, it's guaranteed every banner and almost all ops are permanent. Um, yeah. now some of them stay gotcha only for a while, but still it's, it's, it's great. It's a great game. Um, and actually I just checked, it's not even a year old. Somebody told me it came out April last year. Um, so yeah, it's really generous for a, such a young game, but also it's probably why it's missing maybe some of its extra fiddly bits. Yeah, that's the other thing, because I was actually looking at it. It has no... um, Because I'm going to tell you right now, two of my favorite um, fucking units are the fucking robots, because I have both a Lancet and a Cassette, and they're, Cassette. Fucking Cassette. they're fucking adorable. They're fucking adorable, and... But no, they're Cassette fucking... Cassette has a fucking skin. <laughs> yeah! It's hilarious. I think it's coming out soon, maybe. Yeah, it's a, it's a summer skin. Um, But I can't do... I can't do anything with them. It's like they're stuck being the two-star unit, which... They're unique in the fact that you can actually deploy them outside your limit, but they're still, you know, low star units, so they ain't gonna be punching yes, with Yes, the, the way the game breaks up star rarity is a little weird, cause like, your, your like starter kit units are, um, what you call it? Your, like, uh, they, they all have like weird potentials and, um, and talents and stuff. Uh, and so it's the, and the climb to like E2 is super steep. 
It is. Oh my god, I don't have an E2 yet. I have several E max level E1 units, but no um E2s. A lot of people are uh yeah, a lot of people invest a lot of stuff, but also they may be spending money. I don't know. But yeah, it's it's a it's a get again it could use a little refinement, but I'm sure they'll get there and they're definitely mm. churning out and they're churning out a lot of unique designs. Like um they've mentioned um in in China the newest um uh, one of the new units they revealed is a new a, like oh. mythological creature. Like she's, does she have like tiger ears, but also like a, a dragon tail? I think or a snake tail is what they're going for for her look. Yeah, I just need like for me to like. I feel like for me to be more invested in organized, it needs more systems. Like it needs like their equivalent of uh, retrofits of like their oath, like an oath system. Yeah, most units are good, but some could use some tweaking. Yeah. Um and. There are, I think, uh, just a couple of cases where you're like, God, I really wish we could... There's no way to... Like, there's no equivalent of grails or whatever to take a unit that's lower rarity and lower level cap and be like, okay, I'm going to make you the equivalent of a six star one way or another. Like, yeah, uh, I think Azure Lane does that with retrofits, where you literally climb a rarity level when you're done with the retro. Um, Girls Frontline has the neural mod system. FGO has grails and rank up quests and stuff. Mm-hmm. So as I said, if it's young, you know, I can forgive it, but as I said, it doesn't seem like anything is particularly limited or needs my, to have my constant attention, so I'm just going to keep it a bit casual. Yeah, so I do until... want you to talk about the Sonic movie, but I do also want to say that just as predicted, playing Arknights, because I got more seriously into it, I'm like reading on backstory, I'm like learning stuff, I'm, I'm paying super tight attention to the story and all that things, um, that has totally driven me to write more mages 2020. <laughs> nice. Which, have you looked at that lately? Not yet lately. Okay. I'm going to link it to you in the Discord chat, but let me just let me let it load and just tell you how many pages it is. Uh, it's going to it's going to climb for a second. So, why don't you go ahead and talk about the Sonic movie cuz that Mages 2020 is a completely separate topic that we may be here for like 50 hours. Okay, so the Sonic movie was definitely I'm going to say was okay. Wasn't amazing, wasn't great, but it was okay. I was glad like I'm happy I went and saw it in theaters. I'm not particularly inclined to, you know, buy the blue Blu-ray or, you know, go see it again, but it's good for a one-time experience. Fucking Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik was fucking amazing. This was like, we went back to fucking, um, 90s Jim Carrey's with this, and that's amazing. Um, I don't think Dr. Robotnik in the actual Sonic franchise was supposed to be so hammy, but he sold it. I don't know uh, if he's quite so hammy, like he's hammier in cartoons. I think that just because of the way dubs for Sonic have been, he's been a little a little goofy before, maybe not intentionally. Yeah. yeah. By the way, Sonic like, uh, Sonic Forces is one of the free games this month on PS Plus. I don't even remember what Sonic Forces is. Uh, it's the one. It's the OC one. Oh, really? It's the one where you create your own OC and you you hang out with Sonic and the boys and do stuff. <laughs> and it had it had a fucking Persona Five tie in because Sega. So you could dress your persona as as Joker. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I'll try it out, I don't know uh, But Shadow oh. of the Colossus is the other free game Which is super great, because I'm like Oh hey, I don't have to buy this game again For a third time or whatever <laughs> Because it's but, a really good game, kids And you should buy it that many times Just like I've bought Okami like every time But anyway, Sonic movie So, I find it it's I find it kind of weird that they put Sonic In America I want to say like video game, video game adaptations are weird to begin with, but when you take video game adaptation and then you put it in the real world, it just gets a lot weirder. And for actually, and for what it's worth, I think they did an okay job. They explained it fairly well. It's just, um, it's just odd. You see Sonic the Hedgehog, who I'm very, very happy to decide to change the design, just you know, hanging out with people in fucking Montana, and I'm just like. Okay. And Sonic, for his part, is literally just a hyperactive teenager with, you know, all the cons and pluses of that. And for, I, I don't know who did the voice of Sonic, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it was, they, I think they did all right. It's not going to win them an award or anything, but, you know, it's just like, yeah, I can see that. When you, when, when I hear them talk, it's like, yeah, that's the voice of Sonic. I can't remember what the fucking, uh, sh um, I can't remember, <laughs> I can't we're remember the names. names. The what? I said, we're bad at names. We're bad at names. I can't remember the name of the character or their actual names, but I do remember what Sonic's calls them, uh, Donut Lord. 
<laughs> That's just good. Is kind of um is fun. It's interesting. Like I said, I think everyone like like honestly, there's nothing I can really say to it. It was just an okay movie. Like it's not a bad video game adaptation, which in it in itself is saying something. Yeah, let's see. What good video game movies have there been? Uh, um, Detective Pikachu, Detective I Pikachu, hear. Obviously, I still haven't seen that one, but I know it's good. Yeah. Um, though honestly, Pokemon at this point is a multimedia franchise. Mm. Uh, but let's see. Most people think the original Mortal Kombat was okay, and I agree. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah. wasn't yeah. wasn't the worst. Yeah. Um, the wasn't... the Angelina Jolie Tomb Raiders weren't awful. They may have been limited by the time. I don't know about the newer ones. I think people say those are okay. They're just you know drastically over budget. That's probably about it. Oh, didn't people say that the Doom movie with fucking The Rock was okay? I don't know about that. I don't know. Uh, Silent I, Hill was yeah. I remember Silent Hill was bad. No, Silent Hill was bad. The Mario movie was a clusterfuck. <laughs> but it was this hilarious. Is weird. It's a weird ass movie that went over time and over budget. Uh, I think <sighs> Double Dragon was actually like really, really true to the canon, I think. Let me see. Let me see if I can find a list of video game movie adaptations. Hang on here. <laughs> yeah, the Monster Hunter movie looks like it's gonna suck ass. Oh no, I hurt. Oh wait, not it, not list of video games. Whoops, that's a huge list. Um, I think people liked the Resident Evil movies at least. I don't know if they were good, but people watched them. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I watched the first couple, and then it started getting weird. Well, then they then they were like, "Fuck it, we're we're our own brand now." <laughs> Oh god, the fucking Dead or Alive movie was horrible. Yeah, I think the Tekken Oh god, there was a Far Cry been... movie? What the fuck? Was it an Uwe Boll movie? I bet it was. It a was. What? was it an Uwe Boll movie? It was. Yeah, those are all bad. He did Dungeon Siege and Blood Rain and all kinds of... I gotta be honest, I don't know why people... Maybe it's because most video game studios were, were young and needed the money, but I don't know why anybody signed up with that guy after he did one thing. Like, how, how did he get these licenses? It seems like Uwe Bull really likes fucking doing video game movies. Postal. I don't know. They were cheap. They were cheap, and apparently there was no oversight because the branding didn't give a fuck. Oh, God. Final Fantasy Spirits. That was such a weird movie. It was so weird, and it completely killed uh, Square's attempt at making a movie studio. Uh, let's see here. I'm just, I'm just looking through like the list here. Most of them were bad. Um, Most of them were bad. Like, Assassin's Creed was a recent big budget attempt that, like, just didn't sink it. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't, I don't think it was, like, super awful, but it wasn't great either. Let's see, there was a Hitman movie. That was probably uh, I bad. think I think Max Payne was okay. I, I don't remember a, having seen it, but I'm not a real big Max Payne guy. It had Mark Wahlberg in it. Yeah, not the but, worst. Yeah, it wasn't the worst. Oh, then that does remind me about the Sonic thing, because you talked about, you thought it was a little weird. I... That he like showed up in the real world. One, obviously, budget stuff, but also, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure that is an actual trope from the Sonic games and or animus and stuff. Like they've done that one before. I don't know why, but they keep doing it. That like Sonic just shows up in real life, not Magic Machine Hedgehog Land. Um, Rogue Robin. We said Detective Pikachu at the beginning. Well, yeah, we said Detective Pikachu way way long ago. Yes, because that's a recent one that was actually okay. I don't know uh, if there was, was one with Jason Ga Statham. That was Dungeon Siege, I believe. Yes, it was because it was uh, in the name of the king at Dungeon Siege Tale. He made like three of those. Bolded, freaky deaky. There was a Hitman movie. I don't know how that was. Yeah, I think you mentioned that one a second ago. I don't. I'm gonna guess it wasn't good. I mean, it got the six. Let's see, here. it got the six point three on IMDb. I don't know what that means, but uh. like honestly, I'm looking at all these ratings on IMDb, and I don't see any of these over like a six point five. Oh, Warcraft was a big, like, it wasn't, again, that was another one of those, it wasn't bad, it just did not perform, considering how much fucking money they spent on it. Oh, I take that back, Resident Evil, the first one got a 6.7. Hmm. Making me oh, alive. Oh, by Hollywood Live Action by release date. Yeah, they do, so Super Mario Bros., eh. Double Dragon mm -hmm. was supposedly okay, Street Fighter wasn't great. I don't uh, know, Street Fighter has the memes, though. Yeah, I mean, it does, but it was not a super great, but it, it has staying power. Yeah. It has 11% on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> uh, Mortal Kombat has a 46%, but that one was at least an attempt. Wing Commander movie was bad. Uh, there was a House of the Dead movie. Uh, 
Silent Hill was bad. Postal Hitman, Jedi Far Cry, Mike Payne, Tekken, Prince of Persia. Ugh, that movie was not good. Jake Gyllenhaal, I like you, but you never should have taken that role. There's a fucking. There was a Need for Speed movie. There was. Apparently, uh, released March fourteenth, twenty fourteen, by Walt Disney Studios Motion Pictures. It what? has a whopping twenty two percent on Rotten Tomatoes and a thirty nine on Metacritic. I can't even. Yeah, I don't know. And then it's all just the other shit. Rampage was technically a uh, video game movie, which I think was all right. I mean, it's Rampage off fucking um, Nintendo. I haven't seen it. Yeah. But Oh, shit. They're making another Mortal Kombat movie that's going to come out in 2021. I mean, Mortal Kombat is popular again. Uh, yeah, honestly, if they just... I think they actually said somebody... I remember hearing about that, actually. I think they said they're actually going to try and introduce story elements from Mortal Kombat, and they're like, that'll actually be okay. That'll probably work. Mortal mm-hmm. Kombat's got a story and stuff and characters. You just need to actually... That's the thing about so many of these video game movies. They're awful... And quite frankly, this is why the Monster Hunter movie looks like it's going to be bad. Um, is most of the time these studios don't give a fuck about the branding or the directors mm-hmm. don't, and they just buy the name, slap it on some some other script they want to do for brand recognition, and they throw it down the river. And sometimes they spend shitloads of money doing it. Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, yeah Detective Pikachu took a lot of money. I'm if I'm reading this right, that's four hundred thirty three million dollars. It's a lot of Pokebucks. Uh, that's more than Rampage cost, and Rampage probably costs that much because it's got the rock in it. He's a very highly paid man. Uh, but not quite as much as Warcraft, which uh, took $439 million, it looks like. But that probably was the CG that nobody thought was cool. Uh, they did announce they're doing a Last of Us TV show. A, a Last of Us TV show? That's yes, interesting. Yes, on HBO, I believe. That might be pretty good. So that might actually work. Um... We are theoretically getting an, an an Uncharted movie. I don't know. They don't have Nathan Fillion as fucking Drake. I'm going to be mad. Yeah. Though, that reminds me of a, of a great joke somebody posted about the Last of Us TV show idea. It's like, hey, you've got your perfect Joel. It's called Troy Baker. <laughs> <laughs> Which, I got to be honest, no, I think that works. Just hire Troy <laughs> Baker and let him grow his facial hair out. He'll do great. <laughs> I mean, uh, who knows? Maybe after seeing him in Death Stranding, maybe they'll take it. Yeah. he's He was good. Uh, Death Stranding coming to PC soon? I don't think it's out yet, but soon. Soon, TM. I'd, I'd love to welcome those people to the team. Go back and check out our episodes. That was a trip. Excited oh, to yeah. hear what Mr. Kojima is doing next, though. I think, um, actually, I actually saw, um, I think it's been theorized that Kojima might actually have got Silent Hill. Yes, he's were- talking about he wants to do some horror stuff, and so people are wondering if, if Konami bought the bullet and let him actually work on Silent Hills. Yeah, which I gotta say, oh boy, that's gonna that's gonna rustle your jimmies real good, man. Because well, like I said, well, now that Kojima has basically established himself as an independent game maker, he can go to other companies and be like, hey, yo, you want to work together? And, and I think that just be an ultimate slap I'm in the face. I'm pretty sure if- Sony is perfectly willing to bankroll him for a while now. Because goddamn Death Stranding, um, there was just another round of awards where Death Stranding and Control won a shitload of awards. Mm-hmm. I still need to play Control. I do too, but I don't. I, I last I heard, it's still bad on a vanilla PS4, so I'm afraid. Ah. Uh. So hold on, though. I do want to list some of these upcoming movies that are still to be announced that are video game movies. We've All right, got the Untitled Metal Gear Solid film that's supposedly still a thing. Yeah, that's by the um the film director who is yeah. in Death Stranding, if I remember correctly. Uh, they're making a Detective Pikachu sequel because, of course, they are. Uh, I mean, we're working on a Untitled Mega Man film. Excuse. That can't go wrong. Uh, they're gonna make a Just Dance film, which I'm pretty sure is just, uh, Ubisoft is just selling out. Though, for, interestingly enough, that's by Sony Pictures. Um, there's gonna be a Just Cause film. I can see that. That could work. Um, there's gonna be a Gears of War film. Could also work. They yeah. got a lot of Gears games to pull from. Um, there's gonna be another Resident Evil film. I guess they're, Capcom's gonna try that one again. Well, like, here's the thing. There's the there's the Western Resident Evil films, and then there's the Resident Evil CG films. Yes, they've already been working on movie products. I think this is a, this is a Hollywood live action Resident Evil film oh, specifically. Okay, so I don't. I, it's by Capcom, so I don't know if they're just going to try that again or what. If it's by Capcom, it might be. Mm, who knows? Actually, um, and there's going to be a Borderlands film. That could be interesting. That's going to be real interesting to see. I need to finish three sometime. Um. And I guess, so apparently in 2020 also, um, unlike Detective Pikachu, which involved live action, uh, Nintendo and Universal are going to make a Mario film, but that's going to be animated, which is a smart move. 
Uh, but all right, we talked about movies and stuff. So, mm. uh, I don't know if you can hear, but there there might be room factory noises in the background. Yeah, some of it could be something. I guess uh, I've spare brought up that some of those movies were just somebody in perspective of interest. I think that's the way the movie and film and even the video game industry works. Like that can be a soft confirm to be like, yeah, we're we're we've got a studio, we're working on developing a script. Um, now a lot of times those scripts fall through, but sometimes they don't, and they sit in development hell for a long time. But I was going to bring up Mages of War, Mages yeah. 2020 specifically. Uh, lucky, I I linked it earlier. I can link it again if you didn't get it. But um, we're we're, we're looking at eighty two pages. That's a lot. Um, and basically, I've been going through and kind of alternating what I'm working on. Um, I've ported over a lot of magic talents, but I got a lot of new stuff to work on still. Got a lot more trees to build out. Uh, because of the way mechanics work, I have uh altered how some of the XP scaling for some of the trees works and stuff. Mm-hmm. So yeah, beta testing. Uh, and just because. Uh, cause one of the things is now that because Mages 2020 no longer assumes that you're all playing mages in a combat setting. That's why it's not called Mages of War 2020. It's just Mages 2020. Um, are we just going to make a, we're just going to make a mages, um, setting? Mages verse? Yeah, probably something like that. Mage verse. Um, I like it. So, uh, one, you're no longer called soldiers. Player characters are called operators. Stole that from Arc Knights, but it works. It does work. Um, but, the way that the special thing mages get, specifically if you are a born mage who can use magic that way, because there's a couple of um, other playable templates which can use magic, but they're not traditional mages. And anybody can use mage- magic if they have an Aether deck, which is something I haven't specifically stated, but there's going to be a piece of technology which can... Uh, because Mages 2020 is full-blown science fantasy leaning on um, cyberpunk stuff, you can totally just get a computer to do magic for you. There'll be limitations, like, um, you don't get extra, uh, degrees of success or anything. It probably doesn't use your skill, so it's, like, got flat modifiers, but, and they can only hold so many spells at a time. Storage is gonna be a, a mechanic a lot of computerized devices have, I've decided, because that's always a thing in, like, even in games like Eclipse Phase. Well, especially in Eclipse Phase, because computer storage is, like, basically unlimited, but it's like, okay, I'm just gonna download all these software apps and keep them forever, and I'm like, I don't know about that. Also, I've Most... recently had my own troubles with storage space, so I'm like, no, even in the super advanced future, you don't have enough fucking space on your on your phone. So, when I work on device rules, they're going to have a storage cap, which is going to be how many apps you can fit in that thing, <laughs> like big mechanical apps. I mean, mm-hmm. you'll still have you'll still have flexibility for fluff and like personal files, but like if you want to put your, uh, you know, special hacking app or whatever on there, or your other weird weird shit, you're going to need space. And space. professional apps that do special rule things will require space. But <laughs> equip slops. The way the mage archetype works, because that's the new the new first level. It used to be just um, background career and then quirks and stuff. Uh, now it starts at archetype, which is basically your equivalent of like if you were picking a race in D anD D. Includes normal humans, mages, alfar, which are elves. Because I was like, I. I like I like elf stuff, and I just realized that man, mages were kind of missed the missed the boat on that. So I'm like, I'll do the weird Shadowrun thing, and they were asleep for a while. They were just chilling, okay? Yeah. Uh, you can do playable automata, so you can be a robot now. That was alluded to as a thing that is in development in Mages of War. So I was like, I'll just I'll just pull the trigger on that one, and there are playable androids. Um, homunculi is a core playable archetype. You can just be an artificial human. Uh, and then recently I added. Chimera, you can be a... Because we talked about this before. I decided to add it as you can be a playable Beastman race. Yeah. Because Chimera is the way you talk about that now. That's polite. Mm. Beastman sounds sounds rude. Um, and also, there was some there's some extra fluff in there. Like, yeah, maybe the enemy didn't make some Chimerids. Maybe some humans made them in labs. Science. That's a big theme of Mages 2020, is that, much like our real life, there's a lot of people asking if they could, not if they should. <laughs> which is a line from Jurassic Park, I think. But basically, it's the same thing. It's like, there's a lot of people doing a lot of stuff with science and magic and not necessarily stopping to ask, gee, should I really have developed that technology? Hmm. Did we really need man-portable lasers? Nah, they're cool, though. Um, so, Chimerids have some interesting traits. Uh, they don't get basic weapon training because I've talked about this a lot with, like, Mages of Law and stuff. Most Beastmen don't understand guns very well, despite them having been around for a few hundred years. They're like, but can it be uh, better than a bow, though? Ah, uh, yeah, lesbian centaurs. 
and un- honestly, especially at the point of Mages of War, uh, a centaur with a bow is a lot scarier than a man with a rifle because you have like <laughs> bolt or lever actions, you know. Also, centaur bows are really scary. They're uh, a lot of the classical beastmen have stat lines, and they're 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 meant to be a match for player characters. So yes, they're some of them are spooky. spooky. But um, so they don't get basic weapon training, but they do get free melee weapon training. Um, so they, if you wanted to play like a melee specialist, you could really do really good at that. They get less starting XP by default, uh, but you can pick certain amounts of what I'm going to call unnatural talents, which are going to be basically your weird supernatural abilities like chimerids, elves, and maybe homunculi can maybe, some of them can see in the dark. They just have better night vision. They can see in the dark. Humans can't do that unless you buy cybernetics and stuff. Um, and other weird abilities like that. And some of these will be exclusive to chimerids, like natural weapons, etc. So that gives you some some different type of freedoms. But what mages get is, they get elemental affinity still. What that does, though, in this system is that you get half the XP cost of all magic talents for that element. Oh. As opposed to getting one free. I like that. Um, but in order to combat this, I had to completely rebuild that because I was like, I really don't want to have p- player characters have 250 XP costs because that just makes an awkward number. Mm-hmm. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. So um, now all elemental aspects have multiple tiers starting at 100 because that halves to 50 and going up to 600. Uh, but they have three at every tier, which means there are a lot of new magic talents and a lot of rebalanced ones. And so it really, if you have an elemental affinity and you're playing a core mage, it really rewards you because you can speed down your talent tree. Like you, That's good. Um, it's a lot cheaper for you to go from, you know, starting small fires as a fire mage to breathing fire to shooting heat beams out of your eyes, etc. And most elemental abilities have some new uh, spells. One, thematically, I wanted to make sure everybody has a sense spell. So, oh. um, fire mages get thermal sense. Uh, water okay. mages still get their dowsing ability. You know, various other stuff. Wind, uh, air mages get the ability to sense emotion around them. You know, air vibrations. Okay, that just kind of worked out. That also plays into the new mechanic, which I formalized sustaining a spell. So you can, if you if you can sustain a spell, you can sit on it. You spend a half action every round. Its abilities stick. Neat. Uh, but you take a minus ten to other actions because you're concentrating. It's really important, but you can drop it as a free action anytime if you're like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want my, I want my less penalties. Um, best pair. Um, the thunderbolt tree is the void tree. Yes, you can do the thunderbolt. You can do a lot of thunderbolts. Actually, yeah. I added more spells to void, so there's a lot of different variety. Can you still do the arc blade though? Oh wait, no, you changed the name of it. That's right. Yeah, it's plasma blade. It's actually a, it's a tier higher, uh, but it does more stuff now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so plasma plasma blade is you create a melee weapon, which you can sustain. Otherwise, it lasts a number of rounds equal to DOS. But it's two d ten plus will mod damage, pierce equal to your will mod, and now it's critical cauterize and sunder. Because it's a fucking lightsaber. Yes, basically. Because hey, guess what? After about a hundred years, science has moved on, and pop culture has moved on, and mages have different concepts of spells. Um, wood mages have realized that plastics and carbon fiber fall under their element. So. Um, instead of summoning vines for entangle, wood mages, the wood tree now has the spell black threads. You can just summon carbon fiber to grab people, um, which I do they like have the a hard time of, getting out of. I do like the concept with mages of, because there's a, there's a, there's a common trope in a lot of, um, science fiction you see where usually technology develops around one of two trees, either um uh civilization will either develop up the tree of science and you know um forget magic or they'll travel up the tree of magic and forget science so the fact that you have like basically said it's like yes we're magic but also we're science it's like really sticks out to me um like as you're talking about like um yeah no um we can totally affect plastic with our magic because it's cool yeah because hey guess what got kids plastics are mostly organic yeah. So they're like, oh, shit, that we can. So when you, you know, warp wood, you can also do that to plastics. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now there's a there's a higher level wood spell called Spider's Web, which is you create uh, monofilament carbon wires around you <laughs> in case you want to be a scary, scary motherfucker. 
uh, creates a network of monofilament wires in an area with a radius equal to your degrees of success. Anyone who moves in the area must make a minus 20 athletics agility test or suffer 1d10 plus will mod damage with a pierce of 10 and the critical crippling and devastating tags because monofilament things are very sharp. Uh, yes, you can play your Magneto. Well, I know in Mages of Work you can kind of do it. I made it better. One of the higher level uh, metal spells is called uh, Telekinetic Weapons now, which is basically, nice. you if they're metallic weapons, you can, it's actually, it's one of the top tiers. You can just grab a number of metallic weapons equal to your DOS and have them float around you, and um, once per round, as a free action with each weapon... You can make an attack or parry attempt with it. So wait, do hey, we have? Do we still have? Ra- do you still have the rain of blades or whatever the fuck you call yes, it? Yes, that's still another top tier. Yes. So you Combine can shoot those. blades, and then you could just pull them all to you and have them surround you. And so if you roll like four degrees of success, you get free four melee attacks around. Um, yeah. You still have to. You can choose to sustain uh, the telekinetic weapons, but it's balanced because you're only losing one half action to hold it. It just means it means you have to move around slowly. But you're Magneto, so. Um, how did I make it rain, rain demons? We used, we, we actually used the ritual for it. Yeah, um, um, you used a ritual because none of you knew weather control, which is a yeah. air element spell, uh, which still is in and still can create non-natural weather. Yeah, um, but we basically had to, how did we make it rain specifically? Oh, we had to fucking infuse it with, um, earth aether. We basically no, it, had be, to, it was metal. Cause it gem, was metal aether, that's crystals, right. that's crystals right. and gemstones are metal. Yeah. We basically have to infuse a weather uh, rainstorm with um, metal aether so we can get the entire effect. Because that's a thing that can happen in this world. Yeah. Is sometimes you get aether bursts and just there's magical juice in the air and it rains oil or diamonds or something. Good it's times. pretty rough. Yeah. Uh, but also cool. Uh, metal also now has an ability called deflector, which is you... Um, thematically, metal is all a lot about defenses and about retaliation, basically. <laughs> like, there's a lot of defensive options in it and a lot of control options. One of them is the new high-level spell, Deflector, which is you get to do a response action to deflect a spell if it's meta- if it's a metallic weapon. And you don't suffer the... There's a minus 20 penalty for high-velocity weapons and the lock-on tag. Um, so if somebody tries to lock onto you with, like, a rocket or somebody shoots, like, a railgun or something else really, really fast at you, so long as it's metallic, Deflector just bounces it away from you. Oh, and if you uh, if you choose, you can redirect the attack to another target in DOS and meters. Just bounce the bullet off you into somebody else. Can be pretty gnarly. Yeah, no, I'm still like I said, I've I've told you if we ever played Mages 2020. I'm still playing Wolfgang. He's just actually no, he still probably looked like he's in his 30s. I don't know. Maybe. Well, so that actually brings me to another thing. There was a, there was a system I thought up here. So I said there's archetypes. There's still gonna be careers and backgrounds. I uh-huh. think I'm gonna move to a point system. Um, oh, really? so you can, you'll have like five points and ba- different backgrounds and careers will be diff- worth different stuff. So theoretically you could like buy two normal backgrounds and buy like one shitty career. Like one of your career options will just be slacker or unemployed or something. Um, if you want to play a rich idiot with no day job basically and be like, yeah, so I was raised with shitloads of money and education, but I don't do anything, which makes perfect sense for this setup. Um, or Maybe you're from a super poor background that doesn't net you a lot of special abilities or talents, but you have a lot of career experience. But I added a fourth step after that, because I was thinking about this for a while, just with like, because there's all kinds of these things in the, in a lot of the games and a lot of the settings where I take inspiration from. There's always different corps or different factions or different groups who do different stuff. So I thought this would just be a fluff thing, but then I decided, no, it's going to be a rule thing. Mm-hmm. And so there is the new, uh, faction tab, uh, which is, so, uh, when you're at the end of character creation category, you pick a faction. This is similar to how you would pick, if you were doing advanced unit creation rules, you could pick, like, homeland and specialty and stuff. Okay, okay. But it's baked into the character creation because we're not assuming the extra steps. And also, okay. quite frankly, I'm, ass- I'm, I'll probably write the notes explicitly somewhere, but since there's extra talents to buy and stuff, you will probably be earning more EXP and spending more EXP in Mages 2020, which, can make thematic sense because we live in a educational revolution. Like, okay. um, mages are pretty good because most of them know how to how to read, write, and swim. But that's not <laughs> common for most people in the Mages of War timeline. Yeah. Uh, this is a ultra modern setting with like internet networks and stuff. It's like if you're playing a player character, you're presumably have some experience under your belt. Part of which you may have gotten from your faction. So there's a basic one. It's called Freelancer. This is if you don't want to pick a faction. 
you get trained in one skill, you're not already trained, and you get pl- plus five to one characteristic of your choice. You get a special ability called Free Agent. You can reroll a networking test. And networking is the system I use to replace procurement and logistics, because again, we're not assuming inherently that you're in like a big military organization or something. So instead, yeah. how do you get work? How do you find stuff? Networking. So um, normally a character has plus 10 to networking tests with their own faction, because you work with these people, you can always count on them to get you some info or a job or whatever. Uh, but uh, free agents don't get that bonus, but they can uh, re-roll a failed network- networking test if they want to, because they're good at finding jobs and shit. That's what they do. And then I added a bunch of factions, which are just little little things out there some of them are milit- militant, some of them are not. Um, I've done at least two, which I think have plot hooks, f- which would work as plot hooks for uh, Wolfgang, oddly enough. There's uh, Drake Labs, which is a uh, think tank government contractor founded by a lot of uh, scientists and mages displaced from Stahl, oh. who they're known for um, cybernetics and uh, mobility armors now, but they used to be in weapons tech, uh, and they have fun plot hooks. You can find them at Drake Labs. Uh, they're, they're no ne- not necessarily for being big on safety or ethics all the time. Like, they do a lot of those experiments I mentioned where they see if something works rather than if it should work. <laughs> but they have a lot of cool shit. Um, and in fact, they're special, because this is, I work these as kind of some of your drawback systems in your faction, because you mm. get special abilities which give you a little flavor bonus, but also have some kind of narrative or mechanical drawback. This can be something from simply like, your faction expects you to behave a certain way. If you don't, you're going to hurt your reputation with them, which is bad because they're part of your support network. Or it can be like, hey, you've been trained to like always do this stuff, so you have to make a will check to not immediately do that. Like, Drake legs have to avo- make a will test to avoid attempting to obtain, preserve, or study a piece of new technology. Just oh. because that's what, you're, that's what you're there for, man. You're all about new stuff. Uh, there's a... This isn't one of the plot hook ones I thought of, but there's a a uh, charity health organization called Caduceus, which was founded by mages. Um, so they're all about uh, their special ability is, trait is literally called Healers Without Borders, so that's kind of what they are. Um, uh, their thing is they suffer no penalty to perform medication tests without tools, but they have to roll a will test to not try and offer medical aid to somebody in need. Just like, hmm. that's your training. You're a healer, you help people as a charity thing. So, you better be a stone-cold motherfucker to not immediately go jump to help somebody. And they also have a security wing called Medusa, which specializes in some fun stuff, because I like references. Um, The other thing that I think could also have been a good fit for uh, future Wolfgang is Sang de Fair, which is a large PMC of basically former NATO countries in Europa, mostly East Stahl, uh, Fleur, and Britannia, who are busy doing security stuff in the third world, like (laughs) Alkelbalon. Uh, and, um, they don't, they don't have, like, any, spe- any really weird, uh, flavor modifiers. They just start with insanity points, because they're assumed to be combat veterans. They've seen some shit, which is another thing I added. It's technically an optional rule, but, uh, the, I talked about this a little off mic, too. Um, but the way mental disorders are handled in Mages of War is very much reflective of the, the themes of the game and the time. It's mostly meant to model battlefield trauma. like. You have a really scary shock or something, and you develop um, anxiety, insomnia, uh, stuff like that. It's shell shock. It's yeah, shell shock. Basically, it's directly related to fear, ex- fear responses. Well, mm-hmm. Mages 2020 is set in the hundred years in the future. We've learned a lot about mental health, and while obviously a lot of mental health and sanity systems are not necessarily one to one models of mental health, and this isn't either. It's still an abstraction. This one's a little more nuanced to be like, okay, so as you take stress and take stressful stressful effects, your sanity level will drop. You have 100 sanity, almost like you have 100 blood count. If you drop all the way to zero sanity, you are uh, non-functional and unresponsive because you just, you're just you mentally broken, and that happens to some people if you wear them down a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can make a sanity test, much like how you make a fear test, if you see something that's like freaky and stressful to you in that way. Not a fear response, but like, this is uncomfortable or bad. Like, you can get, it starts at 1 and goes all the way up to 2d10 for, say, suffering torture, watching somebody close to you die, rolling big on the fear chart, seeing a demon for the first time. 
Because that's the thing I note in the Welcome to the Future section. Demons are out. We know they exist now. The enemy is real. They're out there. Uh, that's actually one of, funnily enough, uh, to play up the moral ambiguity too, that's one of the factions actually, is you could say you are a current or former member of uh, Diabolos, which is basically the terrorist front organization for the enemy. Ooh, interesting. Uh, yeah, like, they have internal propaganda and all that stuff, so you are you might not realize you're working for the quote-unquote baddies, or maybe you do, because you need to eat. Um, <laughs> and their special quality is called Dark Past, so they get bonus social so on social tests with outcasts, but if anybody knows you used, you currently are used to work with these people, you take a minus 20 on social tests with them, because they don't fucking trust you. <laughs> Demon! Um, nice. there's also a couple of other, other, like, such, um, proactive foundations, like, uh, there is an elven rights group, basically, Elder Foundation, which is all about making sure that the, cause, you know, the Alfar woke up in the late 20th century when we had, like, computers and telephones and shit, and they're like, I'm sorry, back when we went to sleep, you guys couldn't write. <laughs> like, that's, uh, that's mentioned because, um, the main character in Mages of Law has an, off our roommate who's like her second cousin but also like domestication was a new thing back then so they're like we don't know if we trust this meat stuff Is it, are you like you just you you grow the cow in farms and just eat the cow that's weird humans you cray but also that means they're super weak to marketing they're like I mean, marketing what's read. this dude we didn't we didn't have mage mart mage mart is a walmart stand-in the amazon stand-in is called papyrus because if you, in case you guys forgot, because it's been around a while, Amazon used to be a bookstore, yep. and um, I wanted to do a Nile reference, but I was like, I don't want to call it Nile, I'll call it Papyrus. So um, I don't know if that will be like a mechanical thing, like a shopping app or not, but there will definitely be references to services. That's actually another faction, Diamond Couriers, who are like your your Uber slash Uber Eats whatever Task Rabbit stand-in. You need something and you need it now, you call up Diamond Couriers, they're there. They're like one of the premier mage mail um, businesses. But so, there's the Elder Foundation to look after Elven Rights, and there's Rubra, Rubrum Dente, or Red and Tooth and Claw, which is the Chimerid Rights Group. Because that's a thing now. Even if they're part horse, or part snake, or part cat, uh, beastmen are still sentients, and so we probably shouldn't be assholes to them, but also they really don't fit in our society normally. Uh, hence the fact that, like, they literally don't get... Uh, what's the basic weapon training cover? I think it covers pistol... Sh yeah, pistol shotguns and grenades. That's free. <laughs> Theoretically, every player character knows how to fire a basic gun or throw a grenade-shaped object at people. Because, really, that's not that hard. Uh, now, like, rifles and SMGs is a separate category, and so is melee, and so is heavy weapons, and lots of other stuff, but... It's it's a decent pull. So uh, I I put a lot of fluff writing into factions, and mm -hmm. you you will probably want to write that because read that. I mean, because that's mostly fluff stuff with a little bit of mechanicals. Mm -hmm. uh, but that helped me build the networking system, and I built the sanity system, which healing, especially compared to magic healing, mental trauma, uh, d that takes some work. Like that's you need you need some downtime, and you need some legit like space. Um, I think it's like to heal sand, you need to go a week without anything traumatic happening. And even then, you only get back a little bit. Um, there's mentions for medications, but generally the mechanical thing is is you want therapy. You need somebody to talk to you uh, and help you w work through this stuff. You can only do so much on your own. I mean, it is like cope. Are there like a bit like coping mechanics? Like, yes. Um, like for one thing, there's a note that, for instance, if you engage in something in, uh, uh, an, act uh, an activity that you enjoy, like hobbies, meditation, etc., um, you can increase your base sand recovery to be equal to your will mod, so you oh, can okay. self-medicate to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. uh, but, like, if that's not helping you, you you don't just get over it, right? Yeah. Uh, which is pretty true. Most people just don't get over their, their past traumas unless they can talk to somebody about it. Yeah. Um, and there are certain there are certain effects that will probably help with that once I work on, like, more talents and stuff. Um, like one thing I'm gonna do is I think just because I, I like I like introducing this as a concept that people have a reason to get into. So I think that for instance, um, media library will be a software, and that's basically gonna model like all your Pandora's and your 
Google Play and your Netflix and whatever. But that will probably, as its primary mechanical effect, have a positive impact on your ability to regain sanity because you can access media that helps you relax and not think about bad stuff anywhere. Mm -hmm. And just, you can take downtime a lot easier. Downtime is good. I've also expanded a couple of the um, the possible mental disorders you can get, which make, like, PTSD's in there because we realize that's a thing. Yeah. Um, the general anxiety is in there, along with some other stuff. The normal stuff that happened before, like phobia, depressions, or fugue states, etc. I put a lot of rules into cybernetics, which I've already done the basic cybernetics list. Nice. Uh, that includes a lot of the uh, the fun stuff. Uh, there's, so there's basic repl- like there's already a prosthetic limb in Mages of War, but now that extends to for not just limbs but also organs and eyes, eyes and ears kind of stuff, sensory organs. Yeah. Basic medical prosthesis. You get a little bit of a bonus because normally you're only going to be encountering these either because of a backstory thing where presumably something has happened to you, or in gameplay something really bad happened to you. So, <laughs> um, there you can go for voluntary replacement, but most people don't because that. Conceptually, that is actually really weird. The idea that, like, I'm not necessarily super averse to it, but also, I don't know if I would jump right away to be like, oh, I'm going to ditch my weak, fleshy arms and go for robot arms. Like, I would want to make sure it's a really cool robot arm first, because that's a little weird. Transhumanism! So, uh, prosthetic replacements give you a little bit of a bonus and help you out with some stuff. Uh, But then there's a lot of different things... One of them I think I've referenced before, but is actually a concept you'll be probably interested to know about. Ethereum mm. tattoos, they count as a cybernetic implant. You oh, literally sweet. embed Ethereum in your body in nice. networks. Um, and it means that you never need a focus. Um, anytime you make a spellcasting role targeting yourself, you get a bonus. And <laughs> you can cast spells that normally only work on melee weapons on your any of your natural weapons instead. So mostly your unarmed profile, but other stuff. Uh, which means you can just get flaming fists and other That's things. Kind of awesome. Um, it's it's still a little bit. It's like pricey and a little bit uh, dangerous because you're like embedding active magical juice into your body. But it's done by some people. There's all the usual stuff though. There's you know cranial armor. There's a cranial computer. Um, I've set it up so that you can get a f- basically a free plus five in any of your characteristics through cybernetics if you need it. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Uh, except for the combat ones, but there will be other stuff that works with that. Like, the before we decided to step in and work on uh, WhatsApp, I was meandering my way through weapon attachments, so one of them is, like, a computerized gun sight, which you can plug into your brain, and it gives you... Or AR That's goggles, right. which I haven't stated, oh. but they'll be there. Oh, so a smart link? Yeah, smart link type stuff. Like, you can see the crosshair, you can see your ammo counter. It gives you a bonus to attacks with that weapon while you're plugged in, because, well, that really helps. <laughs> Though there is a slight, there is a slight risk that, like, if you get EMP or something, you have to worry about. Well, now your your gun sight doesn't work, so you have to turn it back on, which is kind of annoying. You have to reboot your gun scope in the middle of a firefight, right? Mm-hmm. But when it works, it works great. Um, there are a couple of fun ones that I snuck in, like um, you can get um, electronic pigment, so you can get electronic tattoos, which can cover your entire skin if you want. Nice. Which can give you a plus 10 to camouflage test while you stand completely still. Or deception tests to disguise your identity because you can look like somebody completely different. You all, It also has, like, just fluff text. You never need makeup and you can communicate secretly by writing messages with your tattoos. You could literally hold up your hand and have a message like, help me, inside it. In your palm. <laughs> uh, there's the multi-voice box, which makes, means you get uh, pitch-perfect singing. Oh, I wonder where I tucked that back in. What? Sorry, I'm just I'm looking for something. The multi voice box. Did I hope I didn't accidentally delete it or something? I can always find it, my thing. But that'll that'll be a modification that gives you like um, you know, um, like I said, you can pitch perfect singing. You get bonuses to imitate somebody's voice only. But obviously, if they can see you, it doesn't work. Yeah. Uh, all this, all the standard type of stuff. You can get an a- you can get a you know a little USB jack in your neck, so you can plug in a computer to get bonuses to tests because mm-hmm. you have direct interface. Uh, you can get the oxygen reservoir, so you have oxygen with you at all times. You can get subdermal armor, that kind of stuff. Nice. You can get extra, you can get, uh, servo limbs, so you can get extra simplified limbs just added to your body, which have different tool attachments. 
I, I'm not looking at it, but is there like a limit for the cybernetics? Yes. Uh, so some systems do not count against that limit, but yeah, normally you can only have equal to your toughness mod in implants. Oh. Because oh. I decided not to go for like an essence type, ooh, your soul gets sucked out. But like, your physical organic body can only handle so much metal and plastic bolted onto it. Mm -hmm. um, like, you've only got so much space in your body, basically, and so much tolerance for added weight. So, if you're like super thickly, uh, super sickly and skinny, you probably can't bolt a lot of extra shit into your body. Probably not, no. But uh, medical prosthetic replacements don't count against that limit, and the what's the actual name for it? Uh, integrated comms, which is basically the codec system, that's so small that it doesn't count against your limit. It's just a little thing that plugs into your ear bones and then has a little tiny mic in your throat. So, uh, but if you you can't go crazy min maxing with it. Okay, that sounds cool. Uh, well, yeah. So they're asking about, uh, yeah. Um, instead of stun rounds, uh, the void talent now has the EMP rounds. Oh. Um, so it still adds the stun tag, but it also adds the EMP tag, which actually makes them even better at non-lethal stuff, because EMP weapons can't do critical damage to organic targets. So you get, quote-unquote, soft bullets, um, but ideally you do extra damage to machines and stuff, because, hey, electromagnetism. That's also something I explicitly noted. Like, some people might be like, hey, Omega, why is uh, electricity void and metal metal? Uh, like magnetism metal, like aren't those the same force? Yeah, but ether is also the same thing. <laughs> um, so literally, there's a description that much like how electro uh, electricity and magnetism are different aspects of the same force, um, void and metal are different aspects of the same energy. So they are tightly linked. It is explicit. Um, uh, thus, you have a perfectly good fluff excuse. Metal mages tend to be good at void stuff, and void mages tend to be good at metal stuff, and vice versa. Like, they, they they work well together because they are just connected aspects. Because that's a whole big thing about Aether is elements are not truly separate. This is something I kind of took a little from, like, Wuxing and other um, Chinese aspects. Elements flow together, you know. A wood rises from water or earth. It can get cut down by metal because they're opposites. It can fuel fire and air and so on. And ideally, everything kind of flows, like, um, even poison or venom, uh, the aspect which uh, reflects entropy, death, and toxins, is connected. It is still technically a natural state um, because yeah. things die. Things die, they decay, they break down, but then usually they move on to something else. And uh, venom mages, there's a lot of new respect for these kids because uh, radioactive decay and various forms of particle and EM radiation fall under venom, so like... I didn't. Exp I don't know if I explicitly phrased it this way, but like, so on the one hand, a poison mage is basically like a walking WMD, like yeah. he is a biological, chemical, or radiological weapon. But also, he's really good at finding and fighting that shit. Um, well, like it's again, it's it's the aim of that. It's like it's never the magic or whatever it's it, it's using that's necessarily bad. It's who's using it that determines yes. it. Like, yeah, boy, howdy, poison poison mages can be really nasty. They still have the ability to do kiss of death. Um, I was inspired by Shuten Doji. They have a new spell called Bone Crusher. They can try and just break your bones inside your body. I think it's the oh, only God. instant crit effect in the game. It's pretty. It's like a, it's a 400 tier talent. Um, but it, if it if it hits you and you don't make a toughness test, you instantly break a bone, which is a whole effect. Like it sucks unless you have the special seven in a game plan, hardened skeleton, which means you literally can't break your bones. Mm. Um. Hmm. But also, the, if you own this, because a lot of spells have passive effects, uh, the Venom Mage gets a permanent plus 20 on medication test to set or treat broken, broken bones, because guess what? They know how to affect bones with magic, so they can set your bones real good. Um, and their sensibility is radiation sense. They can literally sense sources of radiation and tell the intensity. So it's like, okay, that's a <laughs> nuclear battery. Oh, that guy's got a suitcase nuke. I'm sorry, I'm just thinking of a Venom who just opens his mouth and just starts making Geiger counting noises. <laughs> tick, tick, tickety means run your ass out of there. Mm -hmm. Oh, ev everybody likes to deep dive the mages. It's a it's a setting I've been working on for a lot of stuff. And just uh, like a lot of the fluff for 2020 is still in development. We're working on it kind of, I'm working on it kind of in parallel with stuff. One thing I did do though is with all magic talents, now start with a fluff description. Yes. So, like, Good. for instance, uh, the spell Mana Battery, it start, it has a mechanical description still. Mana Battery is actually cheaper now. 
probably because mages figured out batteries easier, but it starts with a simple spell allows the mage to store energy in their body like they would in an Ethereum core or other device, and then it goes into the actual mechanics, which is you make a spell casting rolls a half action. If you do, you basically build up energy, which you can store in your body or add to a appropriate storage device. That's not as important now because we have this thing called Ethernet, uh, which is not an internet analog, actually. It can do some of that, but mostly it's the fact that just like, you know, there's naturally occurring ley lines and mana fonts yeah. and everything. Well, now you have Ethernet, which is just like, it's just Artificial. like having cell phone coverage or um, internet or whatever, Wi-Fi. They just coordinate systems of Aether flowing in the world. This is how Aether decks have power. Which means that, by the way, if you rely on an Aether deck for spellcasting and you're not a native spellcaster, if you go to the middle of nowhere, you might be fucked. <laughs> um, that's why mages are still useful. Even though, theoretically, anybody with air quotes can be a caster, they're still the ones who are born with this ability and can work with it all the time. Like, being a non-mage spellcaster with an Aether deck is like being a blind plumber. Or being a blind electrician. You understand the rules of what you're doing, you can kind of feel what you're doing... But you can't literally see it. Um, you just don't have the sense for it. This is not an ableism thing. I'm just trying to think of an analogy, by the way. L like, you you lack a sense. Mages can sense Aether around them. They can build it up in their bodies. They can manipulate it naturally. If you are using a tool to do that, you cannot. You just don't know it's there. Um, so mages get a lot of technical fiddly bits. But, yeah, there's Aethernet coverage. So just, if you're in a big city... You don't need to worry about where you're getting your magic juice from. It's just in the air around you. Uh, well, space travel is an aspect. I don't know if we want to go into space, because then it's like, what do you do in space, right? Mm -hmm. Are there now magic aliens? Is that what we're doing? I don't know. Um, space travel is of interest to the world of Mages 2020, because it's a near-future type setting. Because uh, the beauty of magic is that certain technology advances faster, because you have people literally able to do magic. Um, even though it's set in what is now our current day, but I'm not sure what we, I'm not sure what we do with space right now. I mean, like we're in the modern times. We don't do much with space really. Yeah, exactly. Like, but that's the thing. I'm not sure what I would do if I pitched this like a hundred or 200 years in the future and it was quote unquote mages in space. I'm like, what would we be doing? Oh, uh, we probably like, honestly, we probably have a couple space stations. We'd have probably a moon colony. Asteroid farming would probably be a thing. We might have some asteroid colonies. But yeah, I don't know. Best, space I, war. I don't know. I that that would be a thing I'd have to have a think. Nothing jumps out at me as like inspiration. Yeah. I guess that we wouldn't be doing like honestly, like looking at human development, we wouldn't be actually doing anything crazy. No, we'd be very controlled. Yeah, it'd be controlled and minimalistic at that point. Unless we had some crazy, like unless us humans now have some crazy scientific breakthrough that lets us get fucking. No, well, not. Um, not like sub, like some high sub light speeds. We ain't, we ain't going far. We really ain't. <laughs> oh God. Mm, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if we'd actually. That's the thing is me saying that. Like, would there be magic aliens? I don't. I don't actually know because um, it's written ambiguously what the enemy is. Um, they could be evil space aliens come to suck all the aether out of our planet. Um, or they're not. Maybe they're literally demons. Maybe they're the evil gods. I don't know. It's it's ambiguous. I actually like that quality a lot in writing because theoretically other people will read this and run their own games of Mages of War in other settings and like I don't want to constrict them into literally being the thing. Is there a demon realm? You're assuming a lot. I don't actually know where the, the... That's the other thing about the enemy is they have the power of Nihil so they have the power of no element. Um, I don't actually know what they do when they're just chilling. <laughs> they can be incorporeal if they like. I don't know if they have a special hell dimension. I haven't really worked that out. Um, I guess technically the Alpha are somewhere in their sanctuaries, which is where you get all those like fairy country stories. We have a lot of folklore about that. I just like to imagine that the demons chilling in some place in like Utah, just on a couch, slipping a fucking serpy. They're just like, meh. They just they're just chilling around the espresso machine, just be like, mm -hmm. listen, dude, I just don't feel like taking down the humans this century. We'll get that's back like, to it. We'll come back in another like, century, and they'll fuck themselves over. It's like, do you see this espresso machine? Like, we didn't have this a hundred years ago. I kind of want to enjoy it for a couple more decades. Wait, hold on. I have to. I have to. I have to uh, meet about this, which is a smashup of mage tweet. <laughs> Demons just taking fucking selfies. 
That will be uh, a thing, that, by the way. Is so, social network will be its own app space, but it'll have bonuses like it it lets you cyber stalk people. Basically, you can roll technology instead of investigation to like track somebody by their social media posts and stuff. Um, uh, I've switched over mechanics to be called technology, which was the in the super extra hacking. You know, in the way back of this homebrew was what the skill was called originally. I just don't think it fit Mages of War, so I called it mechanics. Now it's technology again to incorporate the fact that it's not just mechanical systems, but also electronic systems and all that. There's going to be a lot of ability to kind of sub that skill in for some stuff you're doing. Also, encryption now covers uh, digital intrusion or whatever, so that's your hackman skill. Which is separate because just because you know how to t- how to turn on your computer and uh, do all that other stuff doesn't mean you can uh, hack. And I think Lucky may have ghost owed again. Answer, um, talk about something about Wolfgang. Oh, yeah. Was the there a question about that? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, we took a brief intermission there. Go ahead. Lucky. Well, okay. Well, it wasn't a question that Axe had, but he said Axe like said he had to, he liked the idea of Wolfgang being a high level player at the beginning. It's like, no, that wouldn't actually be how it worked because even if um Wolfgang is the fucking immortal mage who just keeps magicking himself young again, that's the interesting thing about technology and civilization. It changes. Therefore, Wolfgang would have to unlearn what he knows and then relearn basically what's going on in whatever modern setting. So yeah, this is not accounting whether or not he like because war. There's not a constant war going on, so yeah. it's not like like does he take a vacation from between say like World War Two to Vietnam if he even shows up in Vietnam because that has nothing yeah. to do with him. Yep, like you know, or some other Cold War conflict. Like, like there'll be changes in weapons, changes in medicine, changes in technology. Like I don't know, he'll probably still be really good at a sword and shield, but honestly, that's probably about it. Everything else would change. And even then, there are probably some different, not only are there some different melee weapons now and, like, the exotics and stuff, but there might be some new, because I have, like I said, I was, I'm slowly working my way through the weapon mods list. Replacing the old razor-edged one will probably be mono-edge, you know, because everybody knows about their monofilament stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, That would probably handle technically a little bit different than just, like, sharpening it really sharp. Mm-hmm. And even then, like, um, like the basic, because, so I should say this, because I can probably talk about mages for forever, but it is getting a little late, so I don't know how much longer I want to talk. But people have questions and they're interested. But originally, why I wanted to develop mages 2020 was because at some point you basically hit a limit of how sophisticated core mages of war can get. It's yeah. set in a time period. It is kind of a historical fiction. It's set in a fantastic version of the First World War. So, while that's very creative and there's a lot of weird shit you can bring in there, and I totally have, you can also only go so far. So, I I started Mages 2020 as like, okay, but I really like this setting. I want to apply these rules to, like, what we do now, and even possibly a little bit into the future. Uh, mostly so we could add lasers and railguns and stuff, but, you know. <laughs> but that means that the way people are trained and handle weapons is completely different, you know. Like, the to Wolfgang, the basic combat rifle is a repeating rifle which holds five shots and a stripper clip and is bolt action. Um, to a Mages 2020 character, the standard issue combat rifle is probably an assault rifle, which, while smaller caliber, is a 30-round automatic weapon, uh, which probably weighs less. I'd have to double check. I have a lot of... Everything has a weight system in this, so... But, like, um, and the, the range is a lot shorter on an assault rifle compared... Actually, it might not be. The repeating rifle might be the same range, but it's like... One thing is that you have basic access to auto-fire weapons, like at the combat level. Mm-hmm. Auto-fire is something that almost never happens in Core Mages of War. Um, like, um, let's see. Mars char- I think both of Mars' characters in both games have owned an SMG, which he occasionally fires. <laughs> um, and that's about it. Like The only time auto-fire comes up is a couple of times I've attacked you with light machine guns. And most of the time, it's when Marth decides he's going to use a weapon. Um, in Mages 2020, if you're fighting people with real mil-spec weapons, or at least police issue weapons, hey, guess what? There's going to be auto-fire. Um, there's also there's going to be burst fire. That's a thing that didn't exist back then. Or if it did, I haven't seen any mentions of like burst-firing weapons. So that's a whole new tag. Is Some some weapons can only do in bursts or can also fire bursts. Which basically the burst fire the burst fire rules are like you use three bullets and you can hit up to three times, but it's not as big of a bonus and not as easy to get multiple hits as auto fire. So like 
yeah, um, if you hand, you know, Wolfgang is getting his training on like a, you know, a 1910 Mauser bolt action. If you hand him an AK-47 or a modern M16, he's going to be like, hold on, wait, I got to get a hand on this. How do you change the mag? Mm-hmm. What's this little switch thing do? That being the fire selector. Cause yeah, so yeah, so that's why I say like I'm still gonna play whatever mage's game. I'm playing Wolf game, but he's still just gonna be a starting level character. He's just gonna have a lot of history, and I'm okay with that. Even the the standard melee weapons have have swapped up a little in this. Like mm-hmm. there's batons mostly. There's a ballistic fist, but that's because it's a punch weapon. So fist. Yeah, there's brass knucks, shot gloves, and a ballistic fist as your punch weapons. Punch. Uh, right, but also, you got the usual shit. You got a riot shield. You have a flash shield for reasons. Also, because I realized, oh yeah, flash is a tag, because I made flashbangs and stuff. So some stuff just blinds people. Um, but like your default, your vanilla melee weapons, which most people can pick up pretty cheap, was like combat knife, machete, police baton, hatchet, you know, fire axe, hammer, sledgehammer, that kind of stuff. Um, and then you have exotic melee weapons, which is shit that nobody. Nobody knows how to use these anymore, except probably Wolfgang, like I said, remembers. But that's stuff like, oh, I don't know, a sword cane, chain whips, rope darts, monofilament whip, you know, survival spear, throwing shit, chainsaw. Chainsaw counts as a as a, an exotic melee weapon. It's in there, and it it's real nasty, but it's not, you know, most people don't know how to use a chainsaw in a combat sense. You probably want to use the vibroblade instead, but that's probably going to be way more expensive and harder to find than a chainsaw. Bring them to me, pizza! And there, there are still exotic ranged weapons and that stuff like bows, but also dart guns, pepper ball, vortex ring gun, spear gun. Because that's another thing. It's like, I keep thinking to myself, do I want a spear gun in this? I'm like, no, it's not. It's not appropriate. They didn't really uh, invent modern spear guns until like the 30s. And you're not going to be underwater that much. So we'll just figure it out. But now you can have a spear gun. Excellent. You can also have implant weapons. They're very, there's a lot of them. Um, and I haven't done mobility armors and mobility armor weapons, which will stand alone. Those will probably be a little weird. Like, you'll have, like, arm-mounted vibroblades. That's what I think, like, the backstory for vibroblade is, is it's like, we developed oscillating high-frequency blades for mobility armors because those are carrying an Ethereum core in them. And Ethereum cores are going to get better after 100 years. Like, the default is 20 charges. These will be probably minimum 30, if not higher. And you can probably get, like, low-cap cores for cheaper that are going to be like 25, just to show you how tech has progressed. Uh, but implant weapons, uh, you can get, you know, blades implanted, mono wire implanted in your thumb. The implant oh, pile bunker. Oh, God, pile bunker. That will also probably be a mobility armor weapon, is you can have a pile bunker installed. It doesn't oh, really work as a standalone weapon, but when you have a your whole arm as a robot arm, it works. You have the implant trodes, which is just, you have a taser in your arm. You can also get just the implant gun, which is a co- super compact SMG. You can get the Big implant o! shotgun. You can also get you can get a wrist laser if you want, or an implant peps because the peps gun is in here. Because I think that was a really cool thing I liked from um, Deus Ex, which is also an actual theoretical weapon, pulsed energy projectile. Huh. You use a couple of lasers to like excite air and create a concussion wave. It's pretty pretty interesting. Because energy weapons is a whole category, but that's good. Like, honestly, I want I would love to have an in-character moment of, like, somebody talking to Wolfgang about energy weapons. And he's like, so, like, Flammenwerfer, right? And you're like, yes, but better. Because <laughs> Wolf- Wolfgang just... would be like, I'm not so sure about flamethrowers, guys. Those I remember those. They're not cool. And they're like, okay, what if I shot a laser? And you're like, you're going to need to roll that back to me. Explain that one to me again. I never <laughs> quite got that. How does that work? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so basically I'm just I'm just kind of off and on working between different mechanical concepts and different fluff concepts. I got a lot of work to do to fill out a lot of lists and stuff, but I'm having fun. And like I said before, I the original aim of Mages 2020 was just to kind of push the setting into the future and get a grip on stuff. But like I thought it would, Ark Knights is kind of tactical science fantasy feel is really right now driving me to be like, oh, let's let's work on a new idea today. Let's work on, you know, well, like weapon mods, or let's work on devices or software or other stuff. Okay, you need to figure out some sort of science, science-based staffs. Hmm. Yeah, probably. Is that... Quarter staff is probably an exotic. Well, I have to do focuses again. Yeah, like I can see that some sort of like um, focuses are now like you have now like large base focuses, but they take up an entire fucking hand instead of being like a. Uh... Yeah. 
like uh, something you can just wear. I don't know. Because that's still a weapon mod, as you can integrate a focus, but I'm thinking that's just like slap a basic focus in your rifle or your your club or whatever. Because mm-hmm. that's just so you always make sure you have a focus on hand, but yes, it's a thing. So, um, Axe asked about um, oh, actually, uh, mobility, mobility units. Um, they're called mobility armors now. This is something I discussed with Lucky a long ago. They're very much more like Excellent. Iron Man or even more now. It's like, and I don't know if if like regular non non magic powered exoskeletons will be a standalone armor or a vehicle or something yet. I'm not sure. Um, mm-hmm. I did do a tentative armor list, which in, that's another thing that's improved armor technology. Yeah. Uh, like I think you're. I decided to because penetration is usually better with modern bullets. I think I decided to overall just make it better. So like um, I think the basic. Yeah, the basic ballistic vest is plus six to the body. Oh wow. Because the old one was the old armor vest was like plus four, now it's like plus six. And it comes with a optional helmet or mask. So huh. you can you can get plus four armor value to your head too, but you take a minus ten on per related tests because it's not really designed for optimal sensing. Mm-hmm. Um the equivalent of like body armor is now riot armor, which is four in all locations, but is plus two versus blunt weapons. Huh. So like okay. bullets you're not super resistant, but if somebody's coming at you with like sticks and stones, it's riot gear's pretty reliable. Okay. And then body armor is now six in everywhere where the body, which is eight. Uh, well, I think that's closer to the equivalent of heavy body armor now. And the, now the heaviest body armor is an EOD suit or a juggernaut suit, which is ten in head and body and eight in arms and legs. And it's it it's got special blast resistance, but you take a penalty on athletics and per test because it's fucking heavy. It sucks. Uh. And, like, honestly, like, there's a couple of, like, the basic is now safety gear, <laughs> which is just, like, uh, it's insulated, it's padded, and it has a safety harness, so it's just, like, do you, it's it's basically anything from, like, uh, motorcycle leathers to, like, a stuntman safety suit to just, like, heavy insulated clothing, you know? Yeah. It's a very broad stat line, but that's one everywhere except the body, which is two, but it also gets the plus two armor versus blunt weapons, because it's designed to be shock absorbing. It's not going to stop a bullet, but again, if you're just punching people, it's pretty good. There's fancy armored clothing. There's the second skin, which is like the really close-up bodysuit. It includes the fluff line. It, you can wear it on its own, but it leaves very little to the imagination. <laughs> Usually you wear it under something. Um, there's the armor silk cloak, if you want to be really, really badass. There is an armor, which is the space activity suit, because theoretically there is... Attempts at commercial space flight, we know what vacuum is, there's experiments, but it's uh, not, you know, it's not super common for somebody to be rolling around in a space suit, but you might be the Fury, who knows? <laughs> uh, the Fury. Uh, but, so, like I said, we talked about this and I decided mobility armors is the way we go. We've taken the unit, which was previously this thing you wore, it was very much like like strikers from uh, Strike Witches or like the whatever weird flying units you had in uh, Tanya. But now they're just going to, they're going to keep expanding. They're more like something like what Mysterious Hero and XX wears, you know, like mm-hmm. full body armor, Iron Man style, Ethereum core in the chest kind of thing. And then they're probably more multi-purpose, like the, if it can fly, it can also probably go underwater. Yeah, that's just something I was gonna ask. It's like, are you gonna have your um, armors like more more I've, separated by terrain, or are you gonna kind of make them more multi multi purpose? They're probably gonna be more multi purpose, but they're probably gonna be more separated by tactical roles. So there will probably be ah. like there'll be like an urban combat model, which is you know it's extra systems and and uh, various components are designed to be like used for close combat. Like it might default come with some some close combat weapons or it might have some special bonus like it makes your unarmed better because it's got like hardened gloves or something Mm -hmm. um there'll be you know some models designed for scouting which are like extra fast but light you know they won't give you as Mm -hmm. much armor protection okay um stuff like that and that will mean that if you're playing like a fully suited up mobility armor game you've got a little bit of differentiation um because the other thing is that these you're not getting necessarily mobility armors for free they're a little bit more expensive they're a little bit more complex but the nature of what player characters do has changed a little bit too. So they're like an extra step, but they're probably going to replace normal ass armor for most characters if you're wearing them. Okay. So I want there to be some variation. So it's not like, Oh, we're all wearing the same thing now because we have to, because we want to be mages. Okay. 
So yeah, there'll be some there'll be some subtle differences, and that gives me more gear porn to do. I love gear porn, and they will have, like I said, they will have their own weapon systems that only they can mount because there are just some weapons you can only fit on like a weird magic powered exoskeleton. Hmm. Like yeah, uh, like probably like if you want to get a wrist mounted torch, you know, the Ethereum torch will come back, but it'll be mounted in a type of armor. Well, and there may even be prob- um, uh, probably. Hmm. Uh, sorry, I was just, I was just checking out the other thing uh yeah um well yeah one i bet because you have you have powered armor that's probably like uh like i said who knows i i like i said i feel like drake labs is is very thematically possible for uh wolfgang to get in there and we'll see we'll see you get to pick your faction so if we ever we'll play see. with wolfgang we'll see we'll see what he decides i'm pretty sure somewhere that armor is just on display somewhere or maybe it got destroyed in some horrific accident. Who knows? Who knows? It's funny that they mentioned Metal Gear Solid ass. There is also a um, there ah! is a stealth suit, a stealth body suit, tactical ass, um, which is made of like thermal absorbing materials and has like a hood you can cover your face and stuff. It's not a lot of protection, but it's sneaky. So it won't protect you from other people's thirst, though. I'll tell you that right now. Nope. Uh, but yeah. So Vespera asked, yes, technically, um. Uh, it's the way archetypes are broken up. It's there's vanilla humans, aka normals, um, who are incredibly normal. They don't get any special traits or anything, but they get a little bit extra starting XP, and they get a decent breadth of stat and talent spread. There are mages. Um, mages can do spellcraft as a basic skill. I made spellcraft an advanced skill in Mages 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, for everybody but mages, because it's because you can now, like, some species can technically pick up magic talents even if they're not mages or other stuff going on. So I wanted to, like, preserve that feel of, like, no, magic, doing actual magic is a thing you need to, like, study and understand. But for mages, it's just something you do. Like, magic is just part of you. So <laughs> they get to treat it as a basic skill. Even if you're not trained in spellcraft, you can probably kitbash, kitbash a ritual or figure out some basic sp- spellcraft stuff. We are a new species, Homo Magus. Um, they also get the elemental affinity, but they get slightly less starting XP. Uh, they get slightly more int and will, though. There are Alphar, which, uh, like I said, are elves. Um, their special traits are they recover from fatigue faster. They only need to sleep four hours a day. They do not physically age past maturity, do not die of old age, etc. Though they can still die from physical harm, disease, and poison, etc. Um, they get a plus 10 to toughness test to avoid falling unconscious or suffering fatigue because they're, they're, the backstory of Alphar is that basically, so in the way back, there are humans, which what, how humans arose is, is a subject of philosophical debate in the setting. Like, because they would have had all their science stuff, you know, theory of evolution, are, are mages just, or are humans just, uh, you know, a, a species of primate that evolved with the ability to use magic, like, are we phantasmals? Because I stole phantasmal beast from uh, fate as a catch-all term for magical animal. Because sometimes you just you just you just take like a regular wolf, but you <laughs> get a little aether in him, and now it's a fire wolf. Um, which is a, a, a thing I just love about certain settings and about certain fantasy stuff you can do, where you can just mm-hmm. be like, "Yeah, we just accidentally got some magic in this normal ass animal, and now he breathes fire." I don't know. <laughs> it makes a great surprise for player characters because you always got to ask yourself the question. Is this a normal ass dog or is this some kind of laser eyes metal dog? Which sounds like a I'm sorry. Now I'm just thinking card. about fucking fire pigeons. Just a bunch of pigeons, just <laughs> laser eyes. They demand popcorn. God, I don't know what. I, uh, uh, phantasmal vermin is a has got to be really scary in big urban environments. Like, oh yeah, if you accidentally get a f- a, a rat of fire infestation. mm Hmm. Or you get some fucking blacksmith ants in your house, and they're restructuring your metal walls. <laughs> it's like, on the one hand, this is some really cool art. On the other hand, that used to be my fridge. I need that for stuff. Oh, that reminds me, <laughs> though. There's a f- uh, Speaking of the fridge, that's a funny thing. That's one of the top-level wood spells is just instant house. It's <laughs> called Mance of Earth. You can just make a building, uh, including with furniture, but you can't add appliances. Because those are made of metal. I wonder how up-to-code that is. <laughs> I don't know, but hey, if you want to you want to dig down your talent tree because it's a top level because it's it's pretty bullshit that you can just make a house, but it's still funny. Uh also I think it thematically works because uh wood is the element of 
uh, growth and you know separation and stuff. Oh yeah, totally. Whereas other stuff like like high level earth spells are like I think the, there's a new high f- max tier earth spell. It's, it's a max tier is cataclysm, which is just I'm just gonna open a giant sinkhole and throw some shit in and see what happens. Like earthquake got even more advanced, so you can just make the earth open up and swallow people up. Please don't do this in an urban area. It's bad. <laughs> That's kind of a caveat to a lot of high-level magic is, like, mages can do a lot of stuff. They generally have to be careful because you you don't just willy-nilly blow up a neighborhood, you know? Yeah. That's why I had to phase out Light of Saber. I assume it's just a skill that's not used because that was a void attack where you just created a giant blade of energy and attacked all targets in a 90-degree arc. And I'm like, I bet they don't teach that in school anymore because... If you do that in a population center, that's bad. That's like, oh, I'm just going to collateral this whole neighborhood. Um, they still do have a lot of scary stuff as Void Mages, but I figure that that's like, that's something they don't teach. Because that's the thing about magic talents. That's what spells do they recognize as discrete magic that you can teach repeatedly. Yeah. And theoretically, you could probably backport some of this stuff. Like, um, one of the new fire spells is Rocket Jump. You just shoot fire out of your feet or hands to rocket boost, basically. You can also use it to avoid taking falling damage. You could Theoretically, that works even in the Mages of War timeline, but rocketry is also not a really well-understood science, so I don't know if mages would even think to make that a repeatable effect. Like, what if I shot fire out of my feet to fly? Why would you do that? That's not what fire does. Yeah. But then you fast forward 100 years, it's like, no, rockets are cool. I'm a rocket man. yeah, we don't under we don't have missiles. We don't have any rock propulsions. All our bombings is literally we drop something out of the sky and it falls and hits. Yeah, you're all on iron bombs. That's an, like that's I had to make up a new tag for lock on weapons. Uh, I mean, we have the don't we have the anti tank rockets? But still, that's probably a very yes. That's an anachron. That's a little bit of anachronism. And also, they're they're like uh, anti tank lances in um, Valkyria Chronicles. They're really shitty. Yeah, it's like okay, we've developed a man portable um, recoilless rifle. It's a big long tube with a rocket at the end, but it's not super advanced, and also it's heavy. Like now in uh, Mages 2020, you have unguided rocket launchers and you have like anti-tank guided missiles and shit. Like you can actually understand explosives and they do stuff. <laughs> um, Axe, uh, and Quentin's like, yeah, I'm with a spare. Um, if I have the chance, yes, mega booms, mega boobs. I just never play a mega boobs character because um. I don't know. I try not to play too thirsty in my games. Too thirsty. A little bit of thirst is okay. As evidenced by Arama. Hey, <laughs> hey. Well, the original point was Vesper was like, can I make Unga Booga Cow Chimera? I'm like, probably. That's the <laughs> thing. Like, uh, explicitly Chimeras are, are a little, like, simple focused on, on stuff. That's, that's one of the races that I mentioned. Their, their, f- uh, second ability is called Primitive Mindset. They don't get free basic weapon training, although they can purchase it for 100 XP. They start with weapon melee training in- instead. Um, uh, and, um, they can buy exotic ranged and exotic melee weapons at normal price, but other stuff is doubled. It's basically, like, it's really hard for you to make a Chimera who is, like, a super tactical high-speed low-drag sniper, but if you want to, like, take a fire axe or a sledgehammer and just crush people, it'll be pretty good, and they'll be able to get access to stuff that will make that better. Because they get access to unnatural talents, which will include stuff like you know, um, what I'm going to call, like, supernatural strength, which is like, okay, so you know how you have your normal strength mod? What if you just doubled that for purposes of jumping and hitting people? You know, stuff like that. Um, supernatural speed. Uh, what if you just doubled your agility mod for base movement because you're not human-y, you know? Uh, but they also get extra animal aspects. And yes, riot shields are in. Of course they're in. Uh, yeah, lucky love right. shields. I do. Uh, there's a riot shield and the flash shield, which has, it's, uh, it's just like, uh, Blitz from Rainbow Six Siege or like Lisgarm in, in Ark Knights. It's got giant flashlights on the front, which you can use to blind people. Or you could just hit them with it. Whack! Um, but yeah, so like, they're ideal for that. Uh, and in fact, um, Chimera start with, they start with 30 strength and 30 agility. Oh, wow. Uh, but they take a, they take a knee and they have a 15 and int charisma and leadership. So... They're not as sophisticated and not as sociable as regular humans, but they are pretty fast and pretty strong because they are part, like, they are, uh, chimerids in the, in the setting, if in case you, you know, you, maybe you haven't read my backstory. Some people are weird about reading the 
the Marshall's Guide, which contains a lot of the the extra backstory stuff and like NPC descriptions. But in the way back, the enemy, who are the demons, demons. and the demon kin, uh, they created chimeras of all types, including the classical chimera, but they mixed a lot of stuff together because it's the usual rule of demons and stuff. They're not truly creative. They can only mostly mix and match or fuck up stuff that already exists. Um, so they created a lot of your classic mashup monsters, centaurs, minotaurs, etc. Um, but the thing is, the problem with... I, I have an ongoing theme that part of the enemy's problem is that they just fuck things up for themselves. So... <laughs> Beastmen are intelligent. They're still part human at their base, which means that they're still v- thinking free-willed beings. And so while some of them have different instinctual responses, they're still, you know, sentient, basically. So sometimes they don't do what you want them to do. Um, and the thing about, uh, I mentioned this in the Chimerid stat description, it says not only are there classical purebud Chimerids who live in, like, fringe communities, but also you might get mongrels where, like, you know, people who have chimera traits because they're of an inter they're a crossbreed of a couple of chimeras, even crossbreeds between chimeras and humans, or like I said, maybe they you know, maybe somebody was just in a lab and was like, What if I could make a chimera? But not like evilly. And then it was like, Oh shit, I made a girl who was also a cat or <laughs> oh shit, I made a dude, a soldier who was also a dog. How did that work out? Oh fuck, that means I gotta think about what um I gotta think about what what would happen to a uh, Doctor Death's Panzergeist project. Probably that should be a good footnote somewhere. Honestly, that might be interesting to see how it resolves in play. Yeah, Maybe. I'm just wondering if I need to like make a plot hook there for the future. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe Doc. Maybe Doctor Death or her relations founded Drake Labs, or maybe Drake Labs is secretly run by a dragon in human disguise. Who knows? That's an actual plot hook rumor I put in there. <laughs> a dog who is a cop. <laughs> I don't know, probably. There's probably some stuff. It's just anime things. Anime! Like, that's the thing. Pop culture is going to be a lot bigger of a deal in 2020, and some of it I will have to make up, but some of it can be assumed. But also, it's just going to be like, yeah, no, this is, like, you're... That's the thing. Like, magic is partially about visualization. Mm-hmm. So, magic does a lot of pop culture things. Like, like you know, if you think, what if I had a sword made of energy? That's pretty easy to visualize. So, pleasantly. <laughs> what if I just breathed fire at people? That seems cool. But a lot of it's just understanding tech and just uh, percolation through stuff. But I think I've covered all the work I've been doing in general about it. Uh... Wait, 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 wait. I gotta find, I gotta post it. I gotta post it. Lucky's Where is a GIF. It's not uh, a GIF. I mean, no, not a GIF. It's not a GIF. Oh, you're just gonna post that one reaction image. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um... I'm, I mean, it's probably weird at some point, but maybe it's not. Like, I mean, there are probably like act like rights groups and activists on the subject, you know. Well, yeah, there's explicitly a chimera rights group. Yeah, I wrote that in there. Um, uh, it's just, like I was saying, like, like, oh, sorry, good. Like transhumanism is a thing, and especially if we have like established that, um, they are both sentient and sapient. You know, basically that one. Right. You, we established the Jack Harkness Clause. We established the consent rule. Yeah. Um, and uh, you, uh, let's be real. Humans will fuck anything. Yeah. Like, we already know that about us adding magic to it. Once you start to take the stigma out, because, like, I feel like the fact that people realize demons exist has, like, positives and negatives. Lucky found it. Yep. I love that <laughs> edit of uh, Simpsons, Dr. <laughs> Violet in the background just going, like, what? <laughs> like, Dr. Shen is, like, disappointed but <laughs> dr violet is just like Excuse i'm missing one of my snake memes excuse me well, that's not good hang on i gotta find it oh here it is i mean who does not want to date this cute <laughs> and spiritually mages is linked to an XCOM homebrew i did so uh viper memes who are uh are are perfectly on point but yeah so like definitely there will be some i've already established there there are um there are human alphar relations. There's going to be humans who are uh, alphar blooded. That'll be a trait you can take as a natural thing, which gives you certain bonuses, um, and also has fluff uh, implications. Like you know, um, the thing about automata is that automata are built to be perfect human replicas, and they they're powered by Ethereum cores, but they're still also probably 
probably sentient at some at their highest level, so you can play a player character, so you can bang robot ladies or robot dudes, whatever. It's the it's that's another thing. Also, remember that this is te- technically this is fun- still fundamentally a mages setting, and already in mages of war, mages are described as a libertine progressive group. They are mages look out for mages, and they are very open minded because they can do some weird shit powered by imagination, basically. So, like. You know, that's a common, that is a common ref, uh, image you were referencing, Vesper. So, like, adding a hundred years of sophistication to that does not fix that. Like, now, there is a faction. Um, one of the factions is called Judgment. Um, they are a r- radical religious institution who feel like people are not doing enough about demons. And you can play them if you like. I ghosted again, but I was going to say, like, the more I think about it, it's probably just going to be like how like humans view other races. Like now that I'm probably in a, like back with whole, you know, um, interspecies relationships. Mm-hmm. It'd probably be like m- probably most people are OK with it. They really don't have particularly strong feelings one way or another about it. But it's going to be the ones who do who are going to be the loudest and most active about it. Yeah. So that's what's actually the thing about, about judgment. Um, yeah. Their special ability is called Zealous. They get a plus 10 to attack rolls to anything they perceive as an agent of the enemy. Daemon can, heretics, maleficars, chimerids. But upon encountering these threats, you must make a will test or immediately attack them. Because you are part of a radical religious organization who are like, Hey, we're not doing enough to fight the demons. The demons are back, y'all. And they're still out there kicking. We should do some shit. We should crusade. Crusade! And then it's like, eh. So, like I said, I think the fact that the the enemy is out, for lack of a better term, because in Mages of War, the enemy is not out. They are, they could be a myth, for all you know. Like, I actively introduce them into the game setting because I'm testing out stuff, but, like, that will be a thing whenever we get back to that campaign, will be, like, the fact that, uh, at the very least, the e- your lower E enemy is not going to believe, believe Wolfgang when he says, like, whoa, kids, Demon did that. Now, your commanding officers might buy that for other, for various reasons, but that's not like you can just go to, go onto the, Go on to CNN and announce, yeah, everybody, I'm sorry, that was a demon attack, wasn't my fault. My bad. We're, uh, we're gonna start Demon Counseling 101 now. <laughs> but in Mages 2020, that might actually be a thing that happens. The president might go on, on Mage News Network, and basically, if you want to know about a name for a brand or something in, in Mages 2020, just put Mage or Magic in there somewhere. Uh, or some other reference, like, uh, Burger King is Burger Wizard. <laughs> Just because wizards are the coolest. Um, but, uh, like, they might go on MNN and be like, hey, so today there was a demon attack and a demon just flipped out and shot up a mall with hellfire. A couple of people were killed, some more people were injured, but some mages were on the scene to uh, throw some holy water on that demon and cast it back out to whatever dark dimension it has come from. The ends. Because uh, Banish is still a spell. Uh, it's one of the barrier aspect spells. You can draw a symbol in the air to be like, demon, get out. Out, demon. Or you can just throw salt on them. Actually, that's another thing. Um, I decided that shatter rounds are probably a war crime in the future of Mages 2020. <laughs> so the earth magic bullet is called scourge rounds, and they're salt bullets, basically. So you can um, do extra damage to magical creatures and, and shoot incorporeal things with bullets. Because that's a skill people value more in this day and age. Because that's another thing mages are good at. It's like, dude, there's a fucking ghost in my basement. What do I do? Call a mage. Literally call Ghostbusters. Um, but so I was just saying that because people know that the enemy exists, they're a lot easier to wrap your head around. You know that goblins are a thing. You know that demons are real. You know, there's fucking fire-breathing chimeras out here. But also, because you know that they're real, you know that not everything is them. Like, you can have a conversation with a perfectly normal centaur living in a centaur reserve, because they mm-hmm. do. Because normalized centaurs really have... They don't do paved streets, kids. It's it's a whole thing. They don't they do not do shoes, either. That's another thing. Like, that's, pro- that's probably a real point of pride to centaurs, is they're like, whoa, we don't do horseshoes. I'll fucking stab your family. <laughs> like, do not do that. And no, you cannot ride on my back. We also don't do that. You know, because they're humans, but they're also part horse. Centaurs are also probably really skittish. Very active, very paranoid. Um, but, like, if you go talk to one of them, you realize, oh, hey, they're just like me. They put on their horse pants one leg at a time, just they have four legs. They're definitely not a demon plant uh, out to uh, slurp up my soul. And I've kind of, I don't know if I'm going to, because, you know, lots of things about short stack goblins. 
Um, I mean, I would like, I would, I would pre some dummy. I would appreciate some dummy tech to goblins. I'm not gonna lie. I, I mean, okay, you can, but goblins are goblins are assholes in Mages of War. They are oh, okay. That they, they're not, they're not like goblin slayer rape goblins bad, but like they are like the classical Tolkien esque. Like the uh, goblins are called foot soldiers or demon kin. Basically, the demons tried to make something like humans to fight them. They ended up with goblins. They're they're short. They're skinny. They don't really do technology well. They're vicious little fuckers. There are male and female goblins. By the way, a female goblin is called a goblet. Um, but they're like weird looking and scraggly, and they'll like bite your fingers off as soon as they look at you. Oh my. Um, and they live in small colonies underground and stuff. And there may be some people who are like, whoa. Goblin rights, you know. Maybe we shouldn't mm-hmm. firebomb goblin nests. But then, next thing you know, some guy comes up and is like, listen, dude, have you ever been in a goblin nest? It sucks down there. They they do human trafficking. If you're a mage, they'll cut out your heart and, and offer it as a sacrifice to their gods. It sucks. Oh, God. Yeah, that does sound, that sounds bad. Um, that's probably where the demons are ha- hanging out right now, is they're in, like, all the secret goblin cities and stuff. And who knows, maybe there are, like, under towns, under cities, where there's, like, goblin stealing cable or something. Goblins in the sewers, yo. Um, now, there are some goblins who are basically part daemon who look more freaky. Um, that's the unseely template, I think, is what it's called. Because, you know, I need I need excuses for why there's bad fey. Though there are also dark alfar. There are dark elves now. And th- I took some cues from the dark eldar of 40k in that I assume that dark alfar are, fuck- are fuckers. <laughs> um, they like poison because they're associated with the enemy. So there's a lot of nasty shit they put out. Also, their signature weapon is called a glass knife. It is a knife made of glass. You stab somebody with it, and it breaks, so it leaves sharp shards in them, and it sucks. And also, they're made of glass or other ceramics, so they don't show up on metal detectors. That was just a bonus. They figured that out later. (laughs) Uh, That's actually an exotic weapon. has the fragile tag, which is a thing I added, because some weapons break. Uh, But yeah, so they they are... weird and chaotic and stuff. No, I don't know. I, the demons do actually promote a hedonistic lifestyle. That's part of the blurb on Diabolos is that, like, they promote kind of a, a self-centered, um, y- you know, selfish-focused uh, society where you just do whatever you feel like because that's what demons do. Like I said, the, the weakness of demons is that they get in their own way. They are not, they are not human. That is the thing. 100%. The enemy is not human. Um, they kind of understand humans, but they also don't. Um, they are ruled by their negative emotions, so they don't, demons don't really get stuff like, like, love and hope and friendship. If you have a working relationship with a demon, that is a purely pragmatic thing going on, right? Like, a demon Mm -hmm. is never your buddy. They're just pretending. Though, theoretically, that is a thing you could, that you could try that in this setting, (laughs) is you could try and have a working relationship with a demon now, because they're hanging out. You could find a demon and just be like, yo, what's up? Demon, can you teach me things and have me do stuff? And they'll be like, okay, I'll teach you some things, but you gotta do but, some stuff for me. And it's probably gonna involve a lot of killing. You can probably do a smartphone demon. Uh, there's a... There was a... I don't know if I'll ever get to it, but there was a short fiction I wanted to write about basically a a poison mage coming of age and, like, they do all, you do, do the whole thing where it's like, okay, you're gonna, like, Take your basic apprenticeship test. Are you ready to go be a full mage boy now? Hang on, I'll be right back. Okay, I'll tell the audience this story. Um, It's short, but basically the outline would be that, so what this mage has to do is to go into the catacombs under their house because they're a poison mage that deal with death and stuff. So they have to like go in and sort out um, the the genius, the, the elemental of death that is in their basement. Only the twist of the story is that they work with the spirit to kind of sort some stuff out. Maybe there's some unquiet dead or something. I feel like he's phone ringing. Phone, why are you so loud? It's very loud. <laughs> I like that laugh. Demon, can you help me get an SSR? Sorry, I took a big sip of water. But basically, this probably somewhere in his early to mid-teens goes down there, meets the spirit, interacts with them. Does all the stuff, you know, passes some basic tests, does some basic spellcraft, maybe punches some skeletons. And then the spirit is like, hey, I can fix all this if you just let me out of this weird circle I'm stuck in. And then the twist is that the spirit is actually not an elemental spirit. It's a 
it's a demon they have bound in their basement because that's just their family history is like, yo, dog, we've, we've sealed up some demons. And it's just like, the test is you don't let the demon out. And obviously the kid passes and is like, no, I, don't, I did not let the demon out. Uh, but theoretically, you could get stuff like that. It's just... Um, and like, demonology is probably a... That's one of the themes of Mages 2020 is that some knowledge that used to be secret or hard to find is just out there because there's just fucking internet. So demonology is something that there's probably a lot more writing on about, even if it's dangerous, just because you can't control information. Um, that's going to be reflected in one thing, uh, which is going to be that... Uh, so there's going to be a whole new aspect of spells, which I haven't developed yet, but I'm going to work on it, which is called the machine aspect. Uh, which is basically most of the non-elemental aspects are like, how does Aether, you know, flow through things? So, like, um, the barrier aspect is Aether as it separates, as it divides, as it um, is structured, you know, and may just practically apply that to application. It's like a physics thing. So the machine aspect is how does Aether form systems and complex systems, um, which is like how machines work. So this will do your stuff like you can uh, interfere with electronic sensors and, and senses. Um, you'll probably be able to do like a local EMP and disable robotics. Um, high level stuff will be technopathy to a, you know full dive. Basically, yeah, you know, I'm gonna put my brain in a computer with magic. But also, I'm going to add the blood and spirit aspect to the main playable magic trees. Oh my because, god, really? Yeah. Um, well, spirit has a well, both of them have fluff reasons, but they're different, separate. So. To Mages of War, spirit magic is really weird. Um, it's, it's, spirit is the aspect of Aether that is intangible. It is non-physical explicitly. You cannot hold it. So, it's very complex and very dangerous to work with. It's like fucking with time. Um, which there is a time aspect, but that's, again, that's like, I started those spells out, but that's meant to be like, that's a really special thing you don't fuck with normally. That's a taboo, because if you play around with time using magic, it's really easy to fuck up. And theoretically, if you broke time, maybe you'd break everything. As far as we know, nobody's broken everything yet, but please don't try. I feel like there's probably some worldly safeguard against it. Yeah, there's a, there's some complex metaphysical stuff that could be going on. Like, maybe there's um, spirits of time who are like, dude, don't. There's a, crony, there's a croniad who's, you know, time cop spirits show up and are just like, no, dude. Uh, but anyway, so that's really complex. But because, I think I actually skipped this at some point because I got distracted, but Alphar are basically spirits made flesh. In the way back, humans came up and all humans were mages and magic was fucking everywhere. They called it the Garden of Aether, which has obvious parallels to other stuff, but, you know, magic. magic. Crystal Dragon Jesus. Um, <laughs> which is a trope name. But, um, so... Ma- mages uh, used to be every human. Every human used to be a mage, and we've kind of got back to that with Mages 2020, but not really. Um, so, magic was everywhere, mages were everywhere, and spirits were everywhere, but humans were still humans, which means we were probably using prehistoric magic to fuck some shit up and, like, farm the shit out of our resources, because we're bad at that. So, in order to better communicate with us, elemental spirits created the Alphar as basically their fleshy representatives. So, Alphar are part spirit, um, in fact, they count as a spirit for purposes of any um, mechanical effect. That's part of their archetype template. So, uh, guess what? Um, if you cast, um, what is it, Circle of Protection, which uh, bounces all mystical creatures other than mages out of its area, you bounce elves out of there. They just get kicked out because technically they're spirits. Um, if you created a magic ward that was like, yo, spirits and ghosts keep out, an elf couldn't cross it because they're technically a spirit. Um... But that means that to them, because they can learn to do magic in a kind of a different way than mages can, but they can still take magic talents, to them, spirit magic is something that's just part of them. They just do it as natural as as anything else, because they are spirits. So, since they woke up about 30, 40, whatever years ago, um, and especially because they have interbred with humans, and those people usually have natural talents with the spirit affinity, spirit has kind of come out as like, oh, this... It takes a lot of work, but this is a natural talent people can have. So spirit magic is kind of coming out as a thing that people understand. And I've actually alluded to this, but 
spirit is the aspect that our main character of Mages of Law, Nina, is really good at. That's a, like, unique thing for her, because she's nominally a fire mage, but um, she's good at spirit stuff because of her Alphar heritage. Mm -hmm. Which mostly just means she um, can sense the past and maybe gets spooky ghost feelings. Um, But also she can, like, do dream stuff if she wanted. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's why spirit has been promoted to basically a mainstream magical branch. We have uncovered new understanding of it. Um, And the reason why blood magic is a mainstream magical branch is because of the internet. Because people just it's just a theory that exists out there. And blood is not inherently evil. It's just, it's much like we've talked about a lot of stuff. It's very, very easy to abuse blood magic because you don't have to use your own blood. Mm-hmm. And also they're really nasty. Like the, the top tier blood magic spell is human bomb. You basically cause people's blood to explode and it's really gross. But I've basically figured it's kind of a way to show that the setting's advancing. Those would just be promoted to full mainstream playable. They are just out there. You can literally look up and learn how to be a blood mage. It's it's still probably considered suspicious or possibly verboten in some circles, but I've also, like I said, there's a lot more moral ambiguity in, in Mages 2020 because we, it's a reflection of our modern times, right? So we live in a weirder, more murky time where shit's not so clear cut anymore. And like, even as technology and knowledge advances, there's also maybe some stuff that's like, once you've opened a box, you can't close it, you know? So... I believe that sharing of information and information networks is generally good, but that does also mean that, like, people can get all kinds of knowledge they couldn't before. So you take the good with the bad, and also maybe sometimes you shoot spears of blood out of your hand. Yeah. Oh my god. Was that an oh my god, like, shoot spears of blood, or was that something unrelated? Oh, spears of blood. No, that's one of the spells. Blood spear. Oh, oh my god. See, I said it again. <coughs> sorry, I was, I'm sorry if I was quiet. I was eating my chicken, and it was delicious. Mmm, chicken. I probably might get this chicken again. Is it good chicken? What kind of chicken is it? What'd you get? It was it was the Domino's um, buffalo wing chicken. I didn't know they like smothered it in fucking cheese though. It's like I was like, holy shit! It's good though. I liked it. I'd get it again. Hmm. Because it's I under five ninety nine. Normally, I don't normally combine chicken and cheese, but that might be okay. I do like a good cheese. I'm gonna retweet this eighteen ass. I haven't checked Twitter in a while. So this, am I missing anything? Wait, am I on my own? Yes, I am on my own channel. Thank God. Or my own Twitter. I have to All right, check. but we've uh, we've been going for over. We wasted a whole hour, I think, on a uh, Mages of War. Well, not wasted, but we spent a lot of time. Uh, it, yeah, I was about to say, uh, clearly not. Oh, and I'm retweeting this Kiara. Uh, but yeah, so if you're interested in that, like a lot of people in the audience are, um, I'll probably throw the Mages 2020 link in the description of this video. I already thrown it out to patrons watching before. Um, and there's a lot of extra stuff, like there's the Core Mages of War document. If you wanted to read Mages of Law, which is a ongoing whenever I feel like writing it, you know, off and on. Also, yeah, it's server reset. Remember to log in. <coughs> but, um, there's Mages of Law, which is, like I said, it's a uh, short fiction which is ongoing. It's really good. I like it. Set in the 2020 timeline, which is kind of a... It's it's called <laughs> Mages of Law because our uh, focal point character <sighs> who speaks in the first person is a mage cop. I still love Automata made robot cafes. Oh my god. Yeah, but uh, that's actually if you if you want a good grip grip of what the future is like in in Mages twenty twenty, read it because I mentioned there's a lot of weird shit, mm-hmm. but they do do that. Like they have they have niche maid cafes in the future of Mages twenty twenty, but the maids are robots, literally. Yeah, I think you've added more since the last time I've read it. I'll have to. Uh, maybe we're up to. There's not actually anything in ten, but we're up to section ten. Yeah. And honestly, I kind of, I, I still know the rough outline of the story. Like, I know the who done it and all that stuff. It's just, I, sometimes I feel like writing it, sometimes I don't. I've been very busy lately to sit down and, like, write narrative stuff. I have, I have been reading a lot. I stacked up a lot of books I want to read, and then I'm like, shit, I'm not reading a lot. But, okay, we're at about three hours. It's time to wrap up. I think we hit most of the stuff we want to talk about. Mm-hmm. Like, I really wanted to get you on and, and talk back and forth about major stuff. I think I ended up talking more than you, but still. Well, like I said, you're basically talking a lot about developmental stuff. All I can do is like, oh, I see, I see, and maybe offer a comment here and there. Mm-hmm. Well, who knows? Maybe now that I've uh, reminded you that I've written a lot of new stuff, you'll read over it sometime, and we can have more back-and-forth conversations. Yeah. I actually, yeah, I gotta actually read things. Oh, scritchy. Uh, but we talked about gotcha stuff, which is our usual. We talked a lot about the Final Fantasy VII Remake demo. <laughs> eh, we're over three hours. I don't want to be like, when you've just said that you're not, you're trying not to watch as much anime all the time as before so 
Honestly, I'm still watching stuff. Um, but yeah, we're already over three hours. It's probably yeah. Let's not let's not get into it right now. We 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 have many more weeks to talk about many more things. So let's go ahead and wrap up. I'll compress this up and post it. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, so I guess we'll just wind down, and I'll tell everybody that if you watch this video on YouTube, be sure to give it a like. If you have any comments, leave them in the comment section down below. You can also join our Discord. The link is in the description on our channel page as always. And consider subscribing to the channel so you can always know when we post a new video. And even if you're already subscribed, hit it considering that bell for notifications so you always know when we post a new video right away. Or when we stream or do other stuff on the channel. It's very helpful. Very helpful feature when it works properly. And of course, like I said at the front of the show, consider supporting us on Patreon. You can get access to episodes early and lots of other goodies and it really helps us out. Thrives this engine forward. Choo choo. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, make sure to go back and uh, watch this week's Let's Talk FGO if you haven't already. It's super long because we skipped a week. You know, What's Up is always just super long. Oh, we didn't get to talk about Star Wars at all. No, we didn't want really to talk about our game, but that's okay. Yeah. The the APs are posted, at least. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you can check those out. There's one of those, and hopefully we'll be on. Uh, I think everything will schedule out okay that we'll be able to do it tomorrow as usual. Hopefully I feel a little bit better about this allergies and stuff. Mm. If nothing else, then that for my throat, my poor, poor throat, is I have to make more weird voices. But I'm sure to check those out in any other videos we post on the channel. All right. Uh, I'm tired and I have to edit all this, so uh, I think it's time we go. All right, chicken, now it is time to eat pizza. Lucky's gonna go.